Good morning and welcome everyone to FLW Live. Guys, there was no one more excited to get the day started than this guy right here. Canadians Chris Johnston has relied on early morning flurries, day two, day three, and now day four. Nah, it might not be that big. Never mind, I lied. Hit it like a big one. And more from Chris Johnson in just a bit, but let's meet the rest of the field. Today's the fourth and final day here on the Harris Chain of Lakes, and there's only 10 anglers remaining, including this guy right here, Tony Demetrius. He has stayed patient right there. You can see, not in a hurry, and this has paid off for him all three days. He has weighed in a big fish, and that has been a key, not only to keep him in this tournament, but to have him as one of the top contenders right, to be holding up that $125,000 check at the end of today. Glenn Brown, this is a story right here. Three hour daily round trip all the way down to South Apopka. The big question is, is this gonna pay off for him and be able to produce one last day and give him that edge to take the number one spot? Now, back to Canada. Uh, our social media was lit up with Canadian fans yesterday supporting our number one guy, Chris Johnston. And not to be outdone and uh, you know, not to just leave the spotlight all to Johnston, Gussie jumped back into that and uh, was able to uh, jump up from 16th place all the way to our number five spot. And always, always a, a uh, contender to really compete with these guys at the top level. And Mr. Momentum, Anthony Gagliardi is on everyone's radar starting today. And the reason being is he weighed in almost 25 pounds yesterday. That scares people. He moved up from 22nd place all the way into the fourth place slot starting today. That's one of those things that if he connects again today, I don't think he's gonna be stopped. And that's gonna be in the back of everyone's mind. They're trying to put this last puzzle piece together on day four. And this is it, guys. It's the fourth final day. There's no more fishing after this, and someone's going to be holding up a $125,000 paycheck at the end of today when Chris Jones crowns the winner. I'm Travis Moran alongside Rob Newell. Guys, it's the second stop here on the Harris Chain of Lakes for the FLW Tour presented by Lawrence. Rob, we've got a lot going on, many different techniques, a lot of guys in some different areas. Why don't you break that down a little bit for us? Yeah, Travis, when you're dealing with uh, these kind of bowl-shaped lakes, you saw a lot of the footage there, the guys are offshore. What's going on out there? People are asking, how do they know where to stop? Let's take a look at the uh, Lawrence HDS carbon unit here, and let's take a look at some of these contours these guys are using here. Uh, let's I get it, get the chart back up here. All right, contours, Travis, are the language kind of the love language of bass, so to speak. They love, they love contours, they like, and, and a lot of people ask when they see these guys out here fishing in the middle of nowhere, how do they know where to be? So it's important to understand that fish love anywhere where there's a break, where there's a transition. And you know, we had some questions yesterday, well, aren't those transition lines, those breaks all the way around the bank? Yes, that's true. There are, you, you do have shallow to deep all the way around the bank and it creates that transition. But the key places that you're really looking for is where giant vast flats on the bottom meet contours. And you can see a place right here I've outlined with these boat icons here. Um, it, there, this is a giant flat back behind this place, a huge grass flat. That's all matted grass, shallow grass behind them and you have a nice contour that comes up in here a flat point that sticks out even a little bit of a no like a a, a a knoll up there on top um that is this is a place that some of our leaders have been fishing this week it's a classic classic point you can see it up up close there i outlined them in the icons you, you, you scroll it out a little bit look at that giant vast flat behind there how spread out those contours are that's the kind of fish place those fish love to roam, but these contour lines that come in close, sweep in close, they, that's, that's like a sticking point for those fish. 
It's like a highway. That's where they're going to stop and get hung up. Every place these guys are fishing offshore look almost exactly like that right there. Nice. Now, Rob, we've got to look now at the uh, actual lakes here and break down some of these uh, different areas because we've got a lot of guys fishing Lake Harris, but then we've got uh, one guy in particular making that long run. So uh, give us a little bit more details on this one. Yeah, we got about nine or ten lakes in the chain here, Travis, and the big players this week have been Big Lake Harris. A little bit of Griffin it played the first day for some sight fish, but Lake Harris has been the primary player with the exception of Glenn Brown running all the way down through Dora, Beauclair, Carlton, um, taking a you know hour, hour and a half boat ride all the way to Apopka, then to the other side of Apopka. Um, and also, I talked to Gagliardi last night. He said he might sneak down that way a little bit as well today. That's where some of his big fish came from yesterday, is down towards Apopka. So that's a look at the Harris chain. The key thing this week, without a doubt, the, the, the thing that has caught everybody off guard is that Lake Harris, the grass that has come up in that lake, has cleared the water and has made that lake a completely different animal. It's not what we saw last year and times before. It's turning into an offshore place. Plenty of room, plenty of grass out there, plenty of space for the fish to eat and spread out. Yep. And then one thing that our viewers are going to see today is the difference in water clarity. Um, Lake Harris, that clear water that a lot of anglers are focusing on, and then down at Lake Apopka, uh, dirtier water. And that was the reason a lot of anglers went down there and checked it out and pre-fished and churned back. Glenn Brown, he went all the way, he committed and found some great fish. He's not seeing them, but he's seeing the areas they should be in. And it is fascinating to watch because this guy is dialed in. If those fish show up today, he's going to be there to catch them. We could see some uh, great fishing out of them again today like we saw yesterday. And uh, speaking of some uh, catches, let's go over some uh, tactics that these guys are using and break down a little bit of details. Big yeah. Giant. Uh, um, Johnson here, Chris Johnson, this, this is nothing more than a, a, a schooling situation. Mm -hmm. It is a pure schooling situation. I've talked to him about this a couple times. He said this is almost like a summertime deal. There's plenty of shad around. The fish are chasing. Um, it's, it, but his problem is it's early morning. It, it's, only, it's only an hour in the morning that this happens. He thinks there's a little bit of a shad spawn going on. In complete contrast to that, look at Glenn Brown. He's up there in about two foot of water, flipping, flipping the heavy matted, ve not really matted vegetation, thick vegetation. And uh, that's, that's the size fish five. he's uh, jerking out of those uh, vegetation. There. And his bite totally flip-flopped. Johnson first thing in the morning, and Brown's coming to him Better later in the, in the day. Yep. Another guy that stayed patient and had this bite come later in the day, Demetrius. Look He's at like, that. <laughs> I mean, he was, we didn't see much out of him on live yesterday, but after we went, about an hour after we left live, he catches that, catapults himself right back into that second slot, uh, less than a pound out of the lead from Chris Johnston. So we have got a huge race going on today. Uh, all of our anglers have a, a great chance because this is a big fishery. There are amazing fish being caught. So there's a lot of room to move up. Nobody is safe. It's anyone's game right now. And here's some stuff we've got coming up. Live cameras on our top five anglers to start the day. So we're going to be bringing you four hours of live coverage from uh, Chris Johnston, Tony Demetrius, Jeff Gustafson, Glenn Brown, and Anthony Gagliardi. I'm pretty sure that cast is going to provide a lot of entertainment for us today. Uh, and then we're going to go over General Tire's Roadmap to Victory. Rob, uh, you kind of nailed it yesterday when you uh, gave us your keys, and I think today it's going to be more of the same. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Uh, the Evan Rood Big Mover. We've had some momentum swings uh, going on, and we'll talk uh, definitely about uh, Anthony Gagliardi on that. And then our Mercury Moment. There are pivotal times in this tournament that when you look back, you go, wow, that was huge. We'll go into detail as well on, on who that person was because uh, it's going to be fun watching Glenn Brown break down some things in more detail today. And once again, we started with 188 boats only a few days ago, and there's only 10 battling it out for up to $125,000 payday later on today. Chris Johnson, the number one spot. Uh, this is the unofficial leaderboard. These anglers have now been fishing for uh, almost two hours. So we've got uh, John Hunter, who uh, has four fish already today. So he's getting close to his limit. And then the rest of the field slowly start to get to their spots, start putting fish together. 
I'm not yeah. even sure if Glenn Brown has begun fishing yet. <laughs> He's either yeah. almost there or he just started making some casts. Yeah. And that live shot of, of Gagliardi, it looked like Gagliardi was already moving his way down uh, the Dora Canal there. Um, he said that the key to that big catch yesterday, he was able to, he, in the morning time, he has a schooling thing. Kind of like Chris Johnson, he didn't have anything to go to after he caught 14 pounds schooling. He started looking for beds down in some canals down south and found some big ones. So he's got something to pair with that in the afternoon. He made a big move yesterday. He could also make a big move today. It seems like adjustments are going to be a key to who's holding that trophy at the end of today. Maybe Let's go live, guys. Chris Johnston. And some small ones. Um, I'm probably going to have to call all those out today. I want to have a chance at winning. So I came over to this next spot right here by the boat ramp and I, uh, I left them biting here yesterday there was fish busting the surface a lot of white bass and there's bass mixed in and you see the birds coming down and if you see them busting you go over there and cast but I'm in about 10 feet of water and they're on top of the hydrilla and it's hydrilla is about two feet under the surface so um, I'm just yo-yoing a, a chatterbait over the top just getting a reaction bite out and they hit it every time when it's fallen. And uh, I don't know why the, the steady really just don't get as many bites. So that's where we're at right now. So this is a big timing deal though. So if you pull up here, like in the last, I caught two, uh, three, and a two and three quarter here in the last five minutes. Um, Gussie was here, I think he caught a five and a four. He was here for about an hour. and. Uh, so you can get them quick if you're here at the right time, but right now it's not happening like it was yesterday at three o'clock. So we're gonna give this about a half hour and then start moving around. I like how it's overcast today. It should uh, should get them biting a little better. There's a little breeze. All the right ingredients. I think my starting spot, the fish are getting a little educated there. The first day I caught them for about two hours. <clears throat> Yesterday I caught them for about an hour, and today they bit for about a half hour. So I'll give it a try here in another hour or so. See if I can get one or two more, but. I don't think I'm going to be able to win it off that spot, so I'm going to have to do something different today. You can see Chris Johnston, he's trying to figure out what adjustment he's got to make today. Uh, you know, all night, you know, he's hoping, just, okay. Right now, I'm doing a lot of watching. And these birds are amazing at finding the fish. Like, there can be birds nowhere, and you see them bust, and the birds get to these fish before you do. So I'm just looking for these birds to start diving a bit, and then if I see them, I'll start the big motor and get over there pretty quick. You don't see big, big bass boiling, but I think they're down below and you just, you can't see them. And while Chris hopes that is, you know, the spot he's leaned on throughout the tournament is going to pay off for him first thing in the morning. He has been trying to figure out, okay, what is he going to do after that dries up? What's he going to do to adjust? And like he said right there, watching the birds, so many factors going through his mind right now to figure out that last thing he needs to change or, or correct or move with the fish. And that looks like Matt Greenblatt. Yeah, Chris has basically identified two major feeding windows on these offshore schools. One is the first thing in the morning, and that light of day, break of dawn, 
Um, and then they, they really kind of shut off and he says they, they start rallying again right about 3 p.m. They come back to life and they start feeding again. And the only problem with 3 p.m. is that's about when checkout time, ch check in time is. So he does have something to do late, late, late in the afternoon. It's that, it's that period of time before, you know, from 10 until 2.30 that he struggles. And then that's when, you know, his pursuers gain ground on him like Glenn Brown. He said they really start schooling really good again in the don't afternoon. always have to catch them when the bass are busting um, or the white bass. It's, it's more, I think, you just got to find the area where they've grouped up on this hydrilla. And then even if they quit busting, you can work the area and get a few bites. So we'll see what happens. And though, although Chris had a lot of dead time yesterday between the early morning window and late, he made use of that. Um, you know, he didn't, he didn't catch many fish throughout the, the meat of the day, but he checked things. He went shallow, he made adjustments and was and putting that together. And a lot of times, uh, even finding things that aren't working are helping you eliminate stuff. And so he had a lot of time to do that where a lot of anglers yesterday didn't. He caught a decent limit early on and was able to feel comfortable to expand his water and really start looking around. And, and that's how you get on that next bite. You find that next connection with these fish. Chris has become a bird watcher this <laughs> week. Well, there goes one right there. That was Jonathan Livingston Seagull, by the way. That was just not any seagull. That was Jonathan Livingston Seagull. It's leading him the way there. There's and trust me, it's it's by no accident that that uh, well that okay. So if you want the winning pattern so far to this to to, to this to, to this event, the winning pattern. Is right there. It's that line. That's Chris Johnston's track the last couple of days. That's actually from yesterday. That's his milk run. That's a great look there at, at what his milk run looks like. You can see yesterday uh, started on those offshore schooling spots. They were hot. Went over to the bank about midday to check on some fish to see if anything had pulled up. That's his dead period. He has two or three hours there. He just he, he would love to get something going. Then late in the afternoon, back out to an offshore schooling spot. That third circle, uh, one, two, three, the third circle there um, is the spot I showed on the contour map of a, the big flat back there. That's where the contour lines come in. That is just such a classic. The, the one out here that's in the middle is actually a hole that's in a flat, a big uh, offshore flat, um, seven to 10 feet with grass, and there's like a 15 foot hole in that flat that creates, um, you know, edges and, and that broken grass we're talking about. So classic offshore places there, uh, keeping them honest on the bank, back out to school and in the afternoon. Now, Rob, we are multicasting today. We're obviously on flwfishing.com. You can go there to watch the continuous live feed, but we're also throwing segments over to Facebook Live. So that's a great place to ask questions. Mm -hmm. uh, guys are discussing different topics and stuff. And one of the guys brought up, uh, actually Bradley brought up 
that the Canadian guys seem to have the Florida events figured out this year. And, and that is, you know, these guys yeah. are uh, doing very well. Uh, Johnson with a top 10 finish at Okeechobee as well. His brother had a great finish also. Um, can you expand on, on how these guys, I mean, seemingly polar opposite ends of the uh, spectrum, right? Coming right. from way up north down to the warm southern shallow waters. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do these guys have that makes them really understand these shallow water grass fisheries? Well, I, I, I kind of made an assumption yesterday that the reason Johnston understood this place so well is it's, it's similar to St. Clair uh, in terms of just being a flat, shallow bowl. And he, I, t I asked him about that last night, and he said, I only fish St. Clair a couple times a year. So, that's not, <laughs> so I was like, but, but, but it, it, what, what that situation is, um, I was getting ready to get into that before they brought up the, the map there of his runs. Uh, it's no accident that Johnston and Gussie and Jared McMillan um, have all done well in, the, in these first Florida events. And a lot of that is because of a strong uh, friendship connection between the McMillans and the Johnstons and Gussie. And um, I've written quite a bit about this lately. I call it the, the millennial matrix. It's these young guys that get together and they, they share information, they share everything. Uh, Brandon McMillan and, and Little Mac down there in Okeechobee have shared a lot of stuff with these, you know, with these brothers. And um, that's where a lot of it comes from. Looks like he bowed up on one there and, and missed it. But, but you know, you, Gussie and, and the Johnson brothers, McMillan, they're, they're all real tight. And, and, and that's how they got on this offshore no, thing, thumped it. is by sharing real-time information during Here's practice. Here's more than one in the area if you can get a bite. We'll see. One of these guys uh, made a stop out, you know, after the first day or two of practice when they were kind of exhausting the shallow water situation. Uh, one of these guys made a stop out offshore, saw some schooling, caught some, let the other guys know, hey, here's the tip you need. Keep an eye on that offshore stuff. And they all went to work and they all found the, you know, offshore grass. Some of it they're sharing, but some of them they, they have found their own places. And uh, Johnston said, this is not really, this is, this is not, this is not really my style. This is not really something I would like to do. It's too random. He, he likes something that's more edgy, uh, something that, that's, more, uh, that, that's more definable. He feels like this is very vague where these fish are. You, you heard him say, I need this, the gulls or the, or the busting or something to clue me off. Other than that, it's just very random and scattered. Um, and, you know, Gussie kind of said the same thing last night uh, that the, the, the big key to Gussie's better catch yesterday, he had weighed in 20, was he said he could fish all his places. Uh, he, he had a total of about eight or ten spots, but during the first two days, they got cut in half by uh, other boat traffic out there. Yesterday, he could run all his uh, offshore schooling spots, and that helps. And there's no rhyme or reason to when one's going to fire up and when the other one is going to fire up or vice versa. It, he said that's the maddening part about it. All the fish, when he gets them in the boat, this was Gussie telling me, they're spitting up shad that are the exact size of a rattle trap. <laughs> exact size of a rattle trap and I'm like well okay why not a rattle trap the problem is the bass are up chasing these shad up in about it's about you know eight to ten seven ten feet out there yeah that he, he's talking about that right now there's only two foot of water on top of the hydrilla We'll keep doing what we're doing. This is why I use heavy line in this hydro. drill. Nice chunker? Chunky one. Still gonna have to get bigger. Look at the belly on that. Mm -hmm. Looks like it needs to burp. You saw him throwing the white chatterbait. Yeah. That's something that they also, I was getting into that. They, 
all of them were sharing the information. We got them schooling. We know what they're eating. They were having trouble. There's only two foot of water on top of that hydrilla. That, that hydrilla grows up seven, eight feet, comes up. And it's hard to throw a rattle trap or even a jerk bait in that window of water. That little two foot zone, you're constantly hung up. Um, and Gussie started to get on the, the chatter bait thing, changed it to a white chatter bait to make it look more like a shad. And that's become a, a be key. Upgrading these by about three, four pounds of fish, but. A key adjustment for him. Chatter bait, that white, you know, that shad imitating chatter bait up over top of the grass. He was talking right there about he, he wishes they would just come up and eat a spook or some kind of top water that you could fish over top and get, get a top water bite so you don't have to worry about that grass. But for some reason. The last one definitely felt a lot better than that one. Oh, I just missed one. So he's had four bites in probably the last four or five minutes. And he talked about they're all clumped up. Once you find that area they're in, you just try to hammer it, cast, cast, you know, really some search that. Smaller. Search that area out, but we're probably going to see a few fish out of Chris Johnson right here. That low cloud cover is absolutely a, a, a positive for him. It's a benefit. This whole shad spawning thing has happened in, in you know, that kind of low, low light first thing in the morning. And this is, I believe this has already kind of expanded his window a little bit this morning. Yesterday, his bite shut off pretty quick. This is the first time we've seen him throw a chatterbait. So it uh, could have been one of the adjustments he made, like you were saying. Uh, Gussie saying he was getting them all on a white chatterbait. Maybe they talked a little bit. And, Absolutely. Uh, and that's, Johnson, there, ooh, wow. Ooh, it almost looks like that one hit on the surface. Them. That was real close to the boat. That's it's not giant, but nah, he's not as big as I thought. <laughs> Pretty good one, though. They all feel good on day four. <laughs> oh, should come up and eat it right in front of the boat. <laughs> yeah, I think he got a visual on that one when it came up and ate. Eating clones right there. So that one is uh, <laughs> quite a bit bigger than the ones uh, mm -hmm. the three he's got there. So he's going in the right direction. I don't even know why I put that one on the beam because I told you he was bigger. We're slowly calling up by ounces. Seems to be a few of them in this area, so let's see. You can see it's a do. white chatterbait. Looks like some kind of boot tail swivel mm -hmm. swim bait on the back. This is huge for Chris right here. Just 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 knowing that, that he can still get this going. His number one fear last night was that they would they wouldn't be there. They they vanish. I mean, these schooling fish will do that to you. They'll just they'll bail, gone, leave you high and dry, and the cloud. So, like I said, it's a custom chatterbait with a jackal rhythm wave. Um, trailer swim bait all right let's see if we can get another one rob he talked about that one's pretty cool i could see my chatterbait just in front of me yo-yoing it and watched him come up all i could see was a white mouth eat it yeah thinking he was a three pounder but and see it's got to be killing him because if a fish will come up that far for the bait why wouldn't they eat a topwater 
That's what's frustrating him right now. Because it would seem like you could throw a big spook out there and they would crush it. But he's tried it and nothing. This is good news for Chris yeah, Johnston. This is pretty sure I saw one chasing this one. Now, even if this fish doesn't even call or barely calls, on day two, he went through a lot of fish. And every mm -hmm. once in a while, he would catch that four or five, six pound mm -hmm. fish he needed. So it's good news there are those bigger fish mixed in with these uh, with these kind of clone, like you said, shad feeding fish. As long as you're catching fish, you could definitely get a good one. That's amazing that, that those fish won't bite a spook. That's the kind of thing that drives a fisherman crazy. Is to see that that the one before that bite on the surface. The ones I'm just catching have uh, holes in their lip for from being culled already. So I'm thinking a lot of these are actually maybe some released fish. I don't know if they're necessarily from this tournament, but there's so many tournaments out of this park that this is the first nice grass bed that they're really going to find. Yep, this window's been extended, Travis. He was he was done. This place was done yesterday when the sun broke the horizon. Mm -hmm. He said by 8:15 he couldn't buy a bite, mm -hmm. and now we're uh, going past nine o'clock right yeah. now. He's got to be excited. This is all good news for him. Yep. He's pumping that chatterbait. It you know. The chatterbait is usually something you hold down and reel, you know, rod, rod sideways, rod down. Uh, but he's trying to get that pumping action to vibrate it up, let it fall, vibrate it up, let it fall to, to make it look like those shad on top of that grass. Got to be a big one in here somewhere. Yeah. Such a mix of fish. I mean, there's, there's, there's pound and a halfers to two, to ten pounders in there eating right now. Mm. Look how close that fish is to the surface. Mm -hmm. It is a nice bite though when you do get a bite. Some of these just jump the line. I mean, I know it looks a little rough for a top water, but you, you could get away with a top water in that in that situation right there. But he said he's tried it and they just will not. Dude, that's that's the way fish are, man. It's just put my poles down anywhere in this hydro and it holds me here, so. As long as they keep biting, we'll sit here. That gives you an idea how thick the grass is. It, it's, it's too deep for his power poles, but it's so thick he can just put the poles down. And, the, and, and that's a pretty good little breeze blowing, you know? Eventually that grass just wads up and holds him in place. Wow. Little one. Little ones are not a bad thing. No. That tells him the bite's still going. Then the back seat the backseat fisherman and all of us starts turning, you start thinking, why not a fluke? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
That's always been my problem. Well, if they'll bite this, they should bite something else. Just throw what works. <laughs> quit, quit questioning it. And maybe we'll see a little bit of the fluke uh, from the fluke master uh, Gagliardi a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, not afraid to pick up. Even the double fluke Gagliardi's done well with. <clears throat> Had a long conversation with John Cox last night about these lakes, his home lakes here. He didn't do so well this week, and he said, this grass has completely changed these lakes. It has made them completely different animals of what they have been the last few years. Offshore thing is, you know, there's so many more guys that fish offshore these days than they did 20 years ago. A lot of that is, a lot of that's just due to um, the, the, some of the incredible technology we have these days in terms of so much better GPS mapping, such much better electronics, more accurate mapping, and things like, uh, you know, the the spot lock trolling motor that's a, a the advent of the the recent the Minn Kota spot lock trolling motor lets you lock in place on places that years ago guys were cross triangulating and trying to hold their boat in position and now you can literally fish offshore like it's the bank you can you can you, you can dissect it with your maps you can stay in places and make the same consecutive cast like you would to a lay down or, or a dock or something visual like that so the uh the offshore game has really, really gained a lot of momentum here in the last five to ten years with, with the advancements that uh, fishermen can get out, get out there and they're no longer intimidated by that great beyond out behind them there. They can look at their contours, they can find lines, indentions, irregularities, get a bite, hit the spot lock on the trolling motor. It's just, I mean, it's almost like going down a bank now. You know where you got your bite, you're going to stay right there, make consecutive casts. Rob, we mentioned a little earlier uh, Tony Dimitris' uh, you know, patience. Uh, he's, been, he's just stayed slow. He's caught in big fish every single day. Well, first thing this morning, I mean, look. Mm. <laughs> look at that thing pulling. Oh, my gosh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ah. Wow. Rob, he has one fish. Wow. <laughs> one fish is, <laughs> that, that one fish is somebody's entire limit right now. Yes. That is how you want to start your morning on day four. Wow. And this is Tony's first time fishing the final day here. This is the first time making the cut in his uh, FLW career on tour. And he's got a shot at winning this thing. Uh, it isn't, yeah, he yeah. didn't just scoot into the, uh, this, you know, just as like, okay, I checked that off the list. I made the top 10. I mean, this guy has every shot of winning this event today. Going through the hydrilla. And a lot of times I get little ticks. And I'm thinking, is that a bite? Or is that just catching my bait? Holding it. And that little tick was a big tick. So I always set the hook. I, whether it's whether I think it's a weed, trash, whatever. When in doubt, 
as they say, set the hook. There's no penalty. And she was right here in the boat. I, I bring this bait all the way to the boat because they follow it. Cameraman's got one where I had one just right at the boat, caught it. And it was a nice five pounder. So I'm having the best week I've ever had in my life. Exclamation point. <laughs> Who said old man can't catch fish? Not here. There's a young kid. I call him a kid. His name is Blake Nick in Alabama. He put a title on me, call me old man because I dragged a worm. Well, if he's watching, Blake, this is for you, buddy. Blake, go get yourself some worms, buddy. <laughs> We had nicknames for each other at the time we see each other. He's not doing the tournament this year. So I hope he's doing fine, making a lot of money. But we will see each other and he'll call me old man, I'll call him punk. That was our titles, our nicknames. <laughs> I had a good week with him on Kentucky Lake. I was a coal angler on the back of the boat. I caught 21 pounds, and he caught probably 23. I think it was his rookie year. But I'm doing nothing special, guys. Just dragging a worm. Dragging a worm. You think the worm company would be good to me now? Send me a lot of worms. I think Rob. Oh boy. Yes. Caught that big one right at the boat. Just probably not even two feet from the boat. And look at the water right there. He has the conditions he needs for his day. Working that worm so slow, really wanting to feel out every you know, part of that bottom. And without having any wind, he gets to keep that boat completely still, really feel out the, uh, the contour. And then like you said, that cloud cover, I mean, and now him getting that five pounder, uh, you know, that was basically what he needed to go, okay, I'm doing the right thing. This is what I'm gonna do the rest of the day. Punk. <laughs> Don't normally have temper tantrums. But I did. I got over with when I caught that big one. I don't remember any pontoon boat coming through anymore. Behind me. I'm going to catch four more big ones. I'm pushing for 25 pounds. It can be done. There's big ones here. They're here. Oh, my fan over here. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible with names, but anyway, I was calling him Herb. He, uh, he's been watching me, telling me I'm going to be fishing tomorrow. He's going to watch out for me and be fishing tomorrow. Root me on, real good fan, real good cheerleader. He said, Tony, I hate it. He said, I caught your big one last night. I said, oh, don't, no, don't tell me that. Did he let it go? He said, no, it was going to die. It was bleeding. So we, we ate it. I said, no. Oh, and I said, well, I'd rather for you to eat it than to let me floating in the water dead. That's what I thought. So anyway, it's Henry. Isn't it Henry? Harry, Harry. OK, cameraman knows his name, Harry. He's in that little dock right there. Real good guy, he says he's gonna stay out of the water for me today. He wants me to win this thing. Oh, but I just broke my heart though when he told me that. But then I said, now, did, tell me something, did you catch it right after I left or? Oh, no, I caught it at 4.30, it's all cool. I feel much better now. But it was here. 
Rob and Travis, I've seen big ones with other big ones. When I catch a big one and bring it in, you see another one right beside it. I don't know if it's the buck or another female or what, but hmm. guys, I mean, in this little area right here, there's probably only maybe, hmm, I would say 500 yards maybe. And it's, it's packed. They're waiting to go in behind those trees. And I'm hoping they'll stay right here because I don't want to go in there. It's too dangerous. <laughs> no, I just don't want to go in there. I'd rather catch them out here. So we'll see. I wish I'd catch one for you live. It can be done. I want this wind to pick up so I can get down there and let it blow me back and save me on my trolling motor in case I have to change and do sight fishing. I got some areas, but uh, I'm not a great sight fisherman, but if it has to be, it has to be. So uh, I like to catch them out here if I can. And I'm not doing anything special. Anybody can do this. It's just I'm doing it slow than normal. Normally I'm a fast fisherman. I don't like to go slow. But I've slowed it down and it's paid off. Mm -hmm. And I hear a lot of professional guys say that, you know, when you're not catching them, slow down. And that's what I've done. I tucked my grass, went down these, down the line here, all the way down, all the way around the lake, along the shore, and just marks scattered hydrilla what I wait a minute guys yeah and uh, just marked scattered hydrilla and I would mark it and then when I did my homework I marked you know a B and C D E so when we pulled up here this was my B <coughs> we pulled up here I told my aunt, my coal anchor, I said, no, I saw I caught a couple, but there were small dinks. Let's see if we can get anything going. So we caught two large ones. Well, I say large, they're over three pounds. I said, okay, I think we'll stay here. So we milked it. Caught 18 pounds in this area, first day. Second day was a struggle. Just 22 pounds. <laughs> Third day, 18. So, saying that, they're here. They're sitting right here, waiting to go in, I think. Got a lot of bait here, guys. A lot of bait, they'll bust them. Uh, a lot of shad here. And that's what I look for also, too. Is Big fish. Rob, we got a couple little stories developing wow. here. We've got, uh, you know, Chris Johnson catching quantity. Then we've got the old timer, Tony Demetrius, not wanting to be counted out, focusing on quality. And so the young gun versus the old guy. And uh, it's looking like it's going to be a fun day here. We've got a lot of live coverage. After the break, you guys don't go anywhere. We're, We're coming right back to the Lake Harris chain. There's a better one. Right after baby. these messages. Oh yeah. Woo! It's a solid three. Woo! Welcome back everyone to FLW Tour live action here on the Harris Chain of Lakes. And here is a look at someone fishing very different than, uh, than Tony Demetrius, and that is Jeff Gustafson. He has talked about 
fishing 10 different spots that he's rotating between, just looking for the fish that are actively feeding, throwing reaction baits. Already has a limit this morning, including a four pounder and a three and a half unofficially. Yeah, it's more sign that the schooling bites are doing pretty well this morning. He's fishing very similar to his fellow countrymen there, uh, Chris Johnson. Those guys fishing the same kind of stuff offshore there. He's got to be liking that cloud cover and breeze too. Uh, hi guys. Um, it's going okay so far. I've hit five or six spots, stops, and uh, about half an hour ago I had a pretty good flurry and I got a uh, couple, couple good ones, three and a half pounders, and then filled out my limit with some two pounders maybe, maybe not even, I don't know. They all just got kind of tossed in there because it was sort of mad, a mad flurry for a few minutes. So that was good and you know, you just kind of, keep grinding along out here and you run into that. I'm fishing a, a little stretch right now. This is probably where I have my most confidence to catch a big one. I got a, I got a really big one here the first day, actually my biggest fish the first day and the second day. Found this spot the last day of practice and caught like a couple big ones along here. So it's not as much of a numbers or a schooling place as some of the other spots I'm fishing, but uh, I'm kind of looking for Mr. Big right now. some of those bites he was talking about a little bit earlier. Sure they come back. There's a good one. Yep. Those fish are fighting over that that bait. Good problem to have. That's a little better. <laughs> Not a big one, but upgrade. Stuff out here. And I'm basically letting it sink to the bottom and just kind of ripping it, just trying to sort of be ticking, ticking something. Um, but hit the bottom every once in a while and, and then up on top of the higher hydrilla, I'm just sort of, you know, reeling it along, fishing it like you normally would. But I just kind of got onto this in practice and on the last sort of afternoon particularly, and that's just sort of what I've sort of sort of stayed with, but I mean, you could catch them out here on, I mean, guys are catching them on jerk baits, traps, and I've caught some fish on those as well, but I'm kind of just grinding it out with this thing today, I think. Look at the front of his boat there a second ago, Travis. He had a whopping two rods in the deck. That's when you know you know what you're doing for the rest of the day. <laughs> I think I think Gussie is the one that, that came up with the chatterbait tip and, and passed it on to Johnson. I, I'm not sure about that, but uh, that just shows you wh wh whether it went one way or the other, it's the information flow. That, that, that's become a critical bait for them in the last couple of days. They were 
kind of struggling with where those fish were positioned on top of that grass and how to access them. Uh, you saw Johnston throwing a jerk bait a lot, but it, you know, it became very inefficient because the jerk bait only gets two or three, you know, uh, pops through the grass clean, and then once it gets bogged down, you just kind of it loses its effect. Same with a you know a trap as 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 long and and tall as this grass is, a trap kind of bogs down in it a little bit. So they kept playing around, and I think Gussie Gussie came up with reeling that chatterbait up you know over top of that stuff, letting it fall, and uh, Bingo passed on the good news to Johnston and. Could be, by the end of the day, maybe the key that helps gives uh, Johnston a a boost over into the winter circle. I know I harp on it all the time, but to the Does anybody want to know anything? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to know exactly how deep it is right there where he's fishing. I drove down before Okeechobee and then I left my boat and truck in Clewiston at uh, Brandon McMillan's place. He's sort of my travel buddy and um, so that worked out pretty good. Flew home for a couple weeks and then came back down for this one. So we're going to Lanier next week. So I'm just staying down um, in between and uh, enjoying this nice weather. It's been awesome this week. When we were here for Okeechobee, it wasn't, it wasn't super nice. It was kind of chilly and windy. And this has been pretty much perfect weather for a week and a half since I got down here. But it's too far for me. I live. Uh, for everyone that doesn't know, I live up pretty much in the center of Canada, um, just north of Minnesota on Lake of the Woods. And we get real winter up there. We got three feet of snow and three feet of ice on our lakes. You can drive trucks around all over. There's plowed roads that are just like highways. And uh, we have lots of fun up there, ice fishing and snowmobiling and but it's nice, get, this breaks it up, getting to come down here and do this and fish out in, in the boat. I think Rob and Travis should have to come up and go on an ice fishing adventure just to better themselves. I'm gonna let you go first, Travis. You come back I can't hear what they're it. saying, so <laughs> I don't get to defend myself if I'm getting <laughs> chirped. But Last night Travis learned... has been up there. Uh, he came up to Rainy Lake two summers ago and went fishing for a few days, and we had a blast. And actually stayed in a houseboat out on the lake, so it was pretty neat. But I'm sure he can tell you how beautiful it is up there in the summer and. You couldn't probably pay me to live anywhere else because of that. But we pay for it in the winter a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad Gussie enjoyed our time together as well. <laughs> it was amazing up there. I looked up a stat last night where Gussie's from. Average temperature in February, 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Average temperature in this tournament, about 85 degrees down in Florida. <laughs> it's no wonder these guys I'm like fishing. I'm about to bust a move here. This, this spot seems to be better a little later in the day. Um, I fished it early yesterday. I didn't fish it early the first couple days and I didn't have any action. Um, but right at the end, late in the day yesterday, I caught a pile of them right in front of the takeoff and Chris Johnston and I were both actually fishing out there and I saw him run over there about an hour ago and he, I can know it's him because he's got a huge entourage of boats following him. And uh, I ha he hasn't come back around the corner yet so I'm about to go down there I think and see what's cooking. There was literally hundreds of bass there uh, schooling yesterday and I, I probably caught like 25 fish in the last hour, it was awesome. A couple big ones. Tried it first thing this morning and there wasn't 
there wasn't much going on. There was a major shad spawn happening, so it was kind of weird that the fish, I like, couldn't get any bites, but either they had too much real stuff to eat or they just weren't, uh, weren't around, I don't know. But definitely gonna make a, go make a stop by there here pretty quick. There's a good one, I think, guys. Mm -hmm. Not just yet. Oh yeah, that's a jumbo. This is why I fished this spot. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yes! Woo -hoo -hoo! Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> done, Gassy. That's yeah. a chunk. Thing was like Look, a at that. Wog. Look at that. <sighs> White chatterbait. That's how you win the tournament, a batch of those things. That's awesome. And he didn't even have to drill through the ice for that one. <laughs> He's in sandals. Didn't even have to get the drill out for that one. Let's see what this call looks like. Oh yeah, that'll work. <laughs> oh, even better. Man, those fish look pretty good that are in his live well right now. <laughs> Sweet. Woohoo. Now we're having fun. <laughs> That's awesome. I was just about to hit the road too. Oh, I'm shaking now. You know when you set the hook into those ones. You feel like you're snagged for a second. And then they move. Couple more of those would be nice. Over six. It's fat. Oh, I'm shaking now. I think a lot of people on their way to Okeechobee to fish will be stopping short at the Harris Chain. What a fishery. I'm not sure what they would go throw though right now. Yeah. Uh, there are so many different techniques mm -hmm. working. It is, uh, everybody gets to lean on their preferred tactic and see if whose is gonna be the best. We're gonna bait just like the way Johnson was. Pulling it up. Are we still rolling? Pulsing it, letting it drop. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you boys are good luck. <laughs> I know uh, a few of my friends at home are, didn't go ice fishing today and they were gonna watch. So hopefully they got to see that. That's what's fun about fishing in Florida is you can catch one of those, any of these lakes on any cast and uh, it's sometimes hard to do that, but consistently I, I have had a hard time, but I think I spent quite a bit of, I spent a week down here before Okeechobee. There's a good one I think, guys. Fishing and I've, uh, oh yeah, that's a jumbo. This is why I fished this spot. Come on, baby. Yes! Woohoo! Oh yeah. Look at the shape of that thing. It needs that to That wakes you up. That's a chunk. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Wow. That's the, that fish has indigestion, I'm telling White you. White chatterbait. <laughs> and I guess he's talking about That's how you win the tournament, a batch yes, of those it things. Yes, he... That's awesome. And him. Yeah. He has 10 spots. He knows there's fish on all of them, but it's what it's that timing thing. So he keeps rotating. He was saying he was about to get ready to leave. Yeah. He was going to make that but move. But it's been fun. I got onto this program fishing out in this hydrilla sort of the first day of practice around, you know, mid-morning. Um, hit a school of them where we were, my dad was down practicing with me, and he went home yesterday. Uh, and uh, 
he was actually the one throwing this chatterbait and kind of got onto it um, first. So I'll give him the credit for that. But I, about I got that. on to, you know, sort of got a big school going and then we just sort of kept pursuing that. And you'd go for an hour or two, you know, between bites because you pretty much got to fish this stuff to find them and find the good stretches. Uh, but we, you know, we found a few that day and then just kind of kept doing it over the next few days and found, you know, ended up finding eight or ten pretty good spots. Then they move around like I haven't. I haven't had one spot yet that's been good all four days. So you just, you know, you keep rolling through stuff and, and uh, you know, you just hope you, hope you run into them. But the interesting thing, it seems like when you get into the, the schools of them, that's when you'll get those nicer, you know, three and four pound fish. And when you're doing this, the single ones are either little guys or big ones like that. I haven't caught a big one, like a really big one yet where I've been into a whole pack of them, so. But for whatever reason, this, this sort of, I'm just kind of on the North Shore of Harris right now, and for whatever reason, this area has fish like that around. But I mean, I've spent, it's not as easy as just like come and fish this all day, and I don't know, you know, I've spent a lot of time doing this, but I've, Yesterday I never got one out here, but I've got, like I said, my biggest fish the first day and the second day, and then now that one. So there's something going on out here that they like. I don't think I've ever heard so much talk from fishermen on FLW Live, Travis. It's pretty awesome. I mean, Demetrius started talking, you got Gussie talking. It's amazing what a uh, couple of six, seven pounders will do for you. Yeah, I'm confused right now, all right? <laughs> I, I love seeing fish catches, but I could not tell you who I think is gonna win. Every time we go live to another angler, <laughs> I'm sold. He's got it, he's gonna run away with this, yeah. and then we go to the next angler, and you know, Gussie, he can talk all day long. He has his own television show up in Canada, and so he feels comfortable in front of a camera, gave us the long speech, said hello to everybody, and then seals it with a six-pound <laughs> bass. I mean, that's wow. just textbook. He knows, he knows how to work the cameras for sure. Now, Rob, with all these different techniques going on, there is a lot of variables that these anglers are putting together. They get to really focus on their strengths, but uh, the keys are gonna be important. So why don't we talk right now about the general tires roadmap to victory. Yeah, it's really uh, so far staying flexible in, in your area. That's just really about uh, not getting too dialed in, not getting too locked into one thing. You, you saw Chris Johnson bouncing around looking at the shoreline yesterday. We've seen Anthony bounce up to some canals. You've you, you got to keep the fish honest. They're doing so many things right now. They're out schooling. They're, they're some spawning. And if one of your things starts to go away, you need to make sure that you're on the lookout for something new coming in. Uh, attention to the little clues uh, th on the schooling thing. This has been this has been huge. Little dimpling in the water uh, of a shad spawn, a single seagull coming down and feeding. Um, we saw yesterday um, Ronald Young, the, the the bluegill that that came out of the fish that spit up. He changed uh, his worm. Just these little tiny things that that are all pointing, that, that are the clues, uh, that, that can point you in the right direction to something that has changed to help you make that adjustment. And of course, I say this all the time in Florida, the big bite yesterday, I said, you, might, you, you know, a guy's gonna have to have two big fish to, uh, to win this thing, two big fish a day. I, I think I better change that to three big fish at this point, Travis, as many, <laughs> as many of these guys that are, uh, Putting, putting big fish in the boat so early in the day, it's just been uh, a, a fantastic day. And now, yesterday we had 30 anglers trying to make uh, one of the spots in their top 10 for today, and that leads us to our Evan Rude big mover, Anthony Gagliardi. Started yesterday, 22nd place, moved up 18 places, with that almost nearly 25 pound limit he weighed in, biggest limit yesterday, uh, starts the day in fourth place. Uh, yesterday he was 12 pounds out of the lead, now starting today, five pounds. Mm -hmm. So that shows you just how close all these guys are to, uh, in, in the possibilities for what these limits can bring in. And uh, 
you know, Gagliardi, like I said, everyone has him on their radar because he was the last person to really bring in that strong limit. If he does it again, he's got a great shot at, uh, at pulling this thing off. Yeah. But then you look at what the rest of the field is doing right now, and everybody brought their A game for, uh, for payday. Yeah, Anthony really found something to do in the afternoon. It, the school in place when it peters out, he found if he goes south, looks in the canals, not the canals in Harris. Not, we, we've already determined that, that, you know, the spawning has not happened in the canals of Harris. The fish just don't have to go. If you're going to sight fish or fish shallow for spawning fish, it's been proven by these guys here in the last three or four days, you have to go shallow down on the south end, down towards Apopka because of the dirty water that pushes those fish to the bank. Harris and Griffin, man, those fish are free to roam. The water's so clear. Uh, the grass is so plentiful. They're, they're more out. And um, so Anthony made a wise move yesterday, went down, checked some canals way down towards Apopka and uh, found a couple of big ones laid up down there. And here's a look at these canals right now. We are live. Our first look with Anthony Gagliardi. Live and the fishing's dead. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> I've already made, I've already made my move. It just way it wasn't happening for me this morning on that offshore grass. Um, I caught three, I think, out there. They were all small. I did see one good one caught, but. It just kind of reminded me day two when I struggled all day out there and only weighed in 10 pounds after fishing out there all day. And after catching what I caught up shallow, doing what I, I really love to do, sight fishing and throwing a, a wacky worm and that kind of stuff, I just, I decided to give up on it a little bit earlier. Um, and if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down swinging. I mean, this is, this is what I feel like gives me the best chance. You know, I could have stayed out there and and tried to, you know, try to grind it out, but I'd rather come up here and, and cover water, give myself a chance to catch a couple of big ones if I can find any on the bed. So, like I said, it's 9.47. I've already made the move. I'm a little bit disappointed. I've made it through one pretty good stretch right here that I thought I could come and fish really slow and catch a couple of fish that I saw just cruising yesterday, and I've not, I've not caught one. I've caught a couple of little ones, but I haven't seen any big ones. I haven't pulled any big ones up, but could have possibly been on the bed. It's kind of cloudy this morning, which is not good for me doing this, but I think if I can fish slow, I still got a chance to catch a couple of big fish because I don't think that, I don't think I caught them all yesterday. I didn't fish it out, and it's quite possible you could have had some more fish move up as well overnight. We're going to keep chugging along down these little canals here and hopefully, hopefully come across the one or two that I need and get them to bite and put them in the boat. Again, we already mentioning that cloud cover. Yeah. That's always a little bit of a, a, a you know, struggle when you're trying to sight fish, trying to look for those bed fish. That cloud cover makes it a lot harder to see in there. But we'll see, one thing we haven't checked in on is Glenn Brown yet. Um, unofficially, he doesn't have any fish on the leaderboard. Uh, but the cloud cover, I'm not sure how that's going to affect him today. Mm -hmm. He's not really, he's bed fishing, but he's not sight fishing. There was one yesterday right on that middle tire. I left that one. I can't see though, not at all. I like Anthony a lot, but I have to question him leaving from up in Harris so soon. Uh, we've seen what the offshore bite is doing there this morning in terms of Gussie and Johnston. And the cloud cover, it seems would have been something to make him stay up there in the schooling fish. 
before trying to sight fish. The cloud cover is just an element that seems would favor that offshore thing, especially if you didn't have a limit yet. I think you might have made the move just a little too soon. Yeah, get so close to him and see him that you run him off before you probably do see him. Obviously, he has no way of knowing that Gussie and Johnson are jacking him up on that offshore stuff. But when he gets in the bag line today, and they talk about how red hot that bite was for the first couple hours in the morning. I mean, he didn't spend, by the time we started live at 930, he was already headed down Dora Canal. So he didn't spend much time doing that. But you heard what he said. It was deja vu the day before yes. where he stayed out there all day and... All he had to show for it was 10 pounds. And it's a bad feeling, and he wanted to get into some new water. You can't, uh, you, you can't fault him on that, but you know, the cloud cover in the schooling situation is a positive. The cloud cover in the sight fishing situation is generally a negative. Having said all that, he'll probably catch a nine pounder right now. <laughs> And he has managed to catch a, a few fish today. We have them um, with three unofficially right now. So here's a look at one of those just a little while ago. He's got a spinning rod. We haven't seen too many spinning rods yeah. in people's hands. I don't know if he's exactly sight fishing here. He said he had a couple little places. At the, at the beginning of these canals, he could throw a little trick worm or a, a little wacky rig. And uh, he, caught, he caught a big one that way yesterday. And that fish, a darker fish. Hey, look, that's a shallower. Mm -hmm. That fish is, is used to being up shallow in that canal where you saw uh, Gussie's giant, and that was real white, mm -hmm. real clean looking. Back to live with Anthony. Who is our big mover? Every big mover from yesterday. I like, I like that skip right there, that effortless. Mm -hmm. Slide into that dock and then look the other way at other stuff. <clears throat> you don't want to get in a floating worm or wacky worm contest with Anthony Gagliardi, <laughs> I can assure you of that. I believe this is the canal where he sight fished a five and a, a seven yesterday. That right there makes you hold your breath. Well, that is just mm -hmm. everyone watching right now. That's that is a uh, crowd pleaser. I done with them after the season. <laughs> oh, I see. See the prop on the dot. He said that's what my props look like when I get this. They were pretty gnarly looking. <laughs> He might surprise me and really and really catch a big one here, but it just just after watching those guys whale them offshore, uh, schooling, it's just it, it doesn't feel quite right. This will guarantee a big one for him. Me saying that. 
easy to say when you've watched the guys whack them all day. <laughs> hey, you know, he, he should be fishing offshore. <laughs> FLW is still a game where nobody knows what anybody else has. You know, there's tournament circuits now that they make the leaderboard part of what's going on. Just think if, if, if Anthony had had access to that information. Johnston, Gussie, you know, jacking them up early. If, if, if he knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee if he had access to that information, if that was something that was, you know, part of the game in, in this tour, he would not have made that move there. But in, the, in this, you know, in the FLW tour, all catches are not shared with uh, the other anglers. They don't know what anybody's got. So you have to take the best guess. I'm looking at our unofficial leaderboard here in the studio, and uh, Jared McMillan with a <laughs> five and a half pounder. So far, just one fish, but uh, five and a half. Don't count out the rookie, man, the Florida native. Uh, there's a lot of people watching today, watching that leaderboard, hoping to see uh, Jared climb on up. another one it was actually a big one and it looks like there's a, a mat of leaves that leaves that have blown up right on top of where they were oh, I just had one looking at it That's where they were right there. You can't blame him though. You catch a five and a six. At the end of the day, the previous day, and you, you just led to believe they might be moving up. I mean, it's five and a seven actually yesterday. I don't see him. <clears throat> see the tilapia. All the way down in South Apopka, Glenn Brown there. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna find out if his magic hour is about to start. He's uh, the later in the day um, activity. Looks like it's sunny down there where Glenn is. It does, sunny and nice. So we'll be right back to him with our continued live coverage here on the Harris Chain of Lakes for the second stop of the FLW Tour presented by Lawrence. We are back with our day four live coverage on the Harris Chain. And here's a look at our new top 10 leaderboard, Jeff Gustafson, taking that lead spot live. We all saw him pull in that monster bass that pulled him up to that front with unofficial 18 pounds right now. 
Still in, uh, still in the hunt, Chris Johnston, the uh, fellow Canadian as well. So we got a lot of people on social media just absolutely stoked about the one and two positions here. And then, uh, you know, all these other guys still trying to put it all together, find those final pieces. Some big fish are being caught so far today, though, Rob. Yep, you can look right there. Gussie and Johnston are uh, demonstrating that offshore is the way to go so far today. And that they're both doing the same exact thing, and their train has kind of left the station there. Uh, we're going to get a look at, before we went to break, we're kind of looking to get, get, a, get a start on Glenn Brown. Uh, this is kind of when his magic hour begins. We're going to see if he can, he's at the bottom of the leaderboard now. We're going to see if he can kind of close in on this gap. Looks like the sun's shining down there on him, so that's a good sign. Yeah, he has one fish. He has currently dropped all the way down to 10th place, but if there's one guy that's not worried about that right now, it is Glenn Brown. Mm -hmm. He's going to do what he's going to do, and this is something he is... That long run all the way down to South Apopka, he is going to go the distance with this technique, and we'll see if it's going to hold out. He's not worried about the rest of the competition. He's worried about himself. Textbook, Florida flip in there. I've come back, you know, the south end of Apopka again. Um, started where I started yesterday morning and only caught one. I had another bite or two. But I, I don't know if they're biting a little funny or whatnot, but I just, I just ran onto some fresh water. I just, I know that's what I need to do is stay off of the water I've already fished and I had a bite, I missed him twice. Um, so that kind of reassures me that's probably what I need to do. So pretty much from now on, for a good part of the day, I mean, there'll probably be a couple stretches I hit that are, are waters I've fished, but I'm, I'm just gonna kind of run water that I haven't fished at all. Just pull up if it looks good, fish it. Um, Cause I pretty much know what they're what they've been relating to. And it's just a matter of kind of hitting a stretch. I mean, if I hit the right stretch, it can happen fast. I mean, if you guys were watching yesterday, you saw I hit one little stretch right off that point. And I mean, it was it was every little clump. So I'm not worried about, you know, whether or not I'm gonna catch them. At, at some point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit a stretch, I feel like, and, and get some bites. It's just, uh, it's just a matter of time. Newell needs to send me some good mojo. <laughs> you got it, brother. And I've got a lot of friends out there watching too, rooting me on. And uh, I just, I wanna just catch them today. Something fierce, but I need them to bite. Glenn Brown started the morning in third place, but it has so far been fast and furious for all these anglers. It's been just a uh, free for all of catching big fish. Uh, there's a lot of movement going on, on the leaderboard. 
and uh, last uh, yesterday, day three, he weighed in 17 pounds. Um, I think he's pretty uh, pretty sure that it's going to take a little bit more than that today to actually win this thing. With how many guys are slowly starting to figure this thing out, um, there's going to be at least one person, if not multiple people, that are put, bringing in some big 20 plus pound stringers. And if uh, he's going to find that, uh, or if he's going to have a shot at the lead today, he's going to have to upgrade a little bit over yesterday. But lots of confidence to, uh, on where he's fishing. Gagliardi making those adjustments, trying to put together another piece so he can have a big stringer. But Glenn Brown knowing he's going to run into a stretch. It's just a matter of time. And then we'll find out the quality that he runs into. He said something there a minute ago. might have made viewers scratch their head. He said, I need to stay away from the places where I've caught fish. I mean, that doesn't even sound right. I mean, why would you do that? The object is to catch fish. Why wouldn't you go back to where you caught them? And that's because... What he's doing here is a spawning deal. It's not a replenishing deal, he feels like. When, after he catches fish from a stretch, it's cooked. It's done, it's toast. He needs to keep fresh water in front of him. And going back on past water in a bedding fish situation like this is normally uh, not a real productive thing unless they're coming to the hill in droves and that's not the situation here. Which is a very hard thing to do, and that's also why he's saying, I need to do it, uh, because you catch good fish in a stretch, it is common sense, go back to that same place, see if there's more. And the way he was talking, it seems like he has checked a couple spots this morning that he, that he checked yesterday, but he, he knows in the back of his head and is telling himself, I need to go to this new water, I need to get uh, allow myself to find new fish here. He's done this every day, he'll revisit a couple plays from the day before, He'll go to brand new water, and he said, invariably, when I go to that new water that I've never fished before in this tournament, it, my bite ticks up substantially. And so that's the, it, and he's fishing total. I love this. He, it's, it's, he said he's fished these areas before in the past. You know, he's down there in Fort Florida. But in terms of this tournament, in terms of even practice, he's keeping new water in front of him. He's fishing totally by visual feel. He, it, something has to look right. It's got to have the right mix of vegetation. You see the mix of arrowheads there mixed in with buggy whips, mixed in with pads. This is just like, uh, you know, the quintessential Florida bedding area. Nobody else, not, there was a few boats that went down there. He's kept tabs on the fishing pressure down there. He knows very few people have fished this area. No one is on these stretches, even local fishing pressure. A popka's not been a real pretty lake to fish. That tells him, keep fishing the fresh water. It has no pressure. I do not want to fish behind myself. I want to fish on the freshest water I can get. You know, you, you want to, especially when you're fishing water you've never fished, you want to really kind of put your foot on that troll motor and, and go. But I just, I know that's even going to make it worse. I know he just got to just keep at a slow, steady pace and, and, you know, hit as many of these little pockets and, and holes as possible. Cause I've seen it all week, you know, it seems like you'll, and I've had it happen every day that you'll go, you'll go, you'll go. And then all of a sudden you'll hit a little stretch and it's just bang, 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 bang. So I just, I, I, I just need to, try and keep my wits about me and stay patient and and know that I'm gonna have that happen at some point today preferably before two o'clock if not <laughs> we're in bad shape Gonna take another little hop back up the way. Hit another little stretch.
One of the biggest challenges in fishing is trying to fish slow, fast. <laughs> it's, he just highlighted that right there. You know, something you mentioned too, Rob, about him fishing new water. A lot of people watching this and, uh, you know, tuning in, a lot of people assume these guys have all these spots mapped out. They know them perfectly. They know every little inch of water they're about to fish because it kind of makes sense. That's why you pre-fish. That's why you get ready for these. But the reality is that these anglers spend a lot of time in pre-fish just trying to pattern the fish, find areas, figure out what the general fish are doing. They spend those uh, first two days trying to catch what they can, but then they start trying to expand their water. As they, as they really dial in the bite, then they actually expand the bite a little bit and figure out, okay, are these fish in this area, they learn their water a little bit more. And that's what all these guys have now done is, is just learn a little bit more details, expanded, like you said, in one of your keys, being flexible in the areas. And so it's not that uncommon for guys to fish, you know, to fish day three or day four in water they hadn't fished yet, but they understood what these fish were doing, were able to look at their electronics, their mapping and stuff, and go, these are high percentage areas, I'm gonna go look at them at some point. The patient old man. Mm -hmm. Tony Demetrius, his spot he has a lot of confidence in. So far, he's one for one this morning with one six pounder. So here's the here's the question about Demetrius's spot. We'll welcome any feedback on this. Anybody that's watched this morning can see where he's fishing right there. You see how far offshore he's fishing right there. He calls these fish pre-spawn bass. That water out there he's fishing is anywhere from seven, six, seven, eight, drops into 10 feet of water. This is the conversation I had with John Cox last night. Are those fish actually spawning out there? With the clear water and the hydrilla, are they spawning out deeper in that six to seven feet? Are his fish spawning fish? He believes, Demetrius believes, those fish are staging right there and will eventually work behind that tree line up into the shallows. John said it's already too warm up there. Water surface temperatures is already approaching 80 degrees. Um, those places have been trolled on top of by anglers for the last six or seven weeks. Down there, out where he's making that cast right there, let's call it six, seven feet, valleys of, of, uh, of hydrilla, nice big open holes, big hard, he's got hard bottom there, we know that, he told me he's caught shell on his lures a couple times. Um, that's the, you know, Demetrius, the man doing the work here, believes pre-spawn. Uh, I tend to think what Cox is thinking, that some of those fish he's catching are actually on beds down there. He talked about the, the the fish tend to follow that worm out. I mean, it's, you know, typical behavior of, of a bass that's protecting beds. That's the kind of cool stuff we'll never know. You know, we could, unless you want to get on some uh, snorkeling gear and go down there and see if you can see any beds, you know that. But certainly in, in Florida, in clear water, places like Lake Seminole, I've seen fish bed down to eight, nine, ten feet. And, and, and clumpy grass and, and those beautiful caverns and stuff you can see you know when the sun gets just right up overhead you can see but he's it's hard to call his bite there an offshore bite schooling thing like what you're seeing Gussie and Johnston doing he's just too close to the bank and, and the, the stuff he's throwing is just not that shad imitating type of thing I, I did see a swim bait in his lure collection there on his deck that you know looked like a little uh, a shad a uh, little boot tail swimmer um, which made me think about that but all I've seen him throw is that worm and uh, I, I just I'd, I'd be curious as to what people think about that in terms of what he's catching there and maybe it's a little bit of both there's just there's some spawning going on out there and they're just kind of swarming around but there, there's no doubt he has found something really special right there. A little piece of, of sandy hard bottom that sticks out there. Some shell, scattered hydrilla.
how about his story earlier where he said the guy came out on the dock and told him that he'd caught a big one out there. It was bleeding, so he had to take it <laughs> and eat it. I mean, I wonder if that guy enjoyed his $100,000 bath. <laughs> 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 yeah. That might be an expensive. Yeah. <laughs> you think you've had an expensive steak dinner, Travis? <laughs> that guy in that house might, might have just eaten a $100,000 bath, didn't even know it. <laughs> Definitely, it can be a little discouraging, or, or you look at it as uh, it's reassuring that there are big fish in the area. Mm -hmm. Steely determination. Thinks what we're going with on Demetrius. You just saw the look on his face there. That's the wily veteran, the, the steely determination. Trying to keep the bait in the water as long as possible. The old man. That's, he said it himself. <laughs> you and I are just punks, Travis. <laughs> Comes near the boat or not. It doesn't matter to them. They want it, they're going to get it. I wonder if Blake Nick is watching. I wonder if he got called out today for. Demetrius called him out. Check back in with Johnson, see if that offshore thing's still happening. I went to a spot where I ended yesterday by the ramp and made a few upgrades. Um, still looking for a kicker though. I got, they're all between, I don't know, two and a half, or two pounds to two and three quarters. And uh, given this spot where I started one more try, I just got here. Um, I don't expect to get them loaded again, but I'm just hoping to get one big one here. I'm not gonna give it too long though. And then uh, we're going to start moving around, looking for that one or two kickers. I just talked to Gussie, and he's cracking them. So I'm going to have to catch him. I knew I was going to, but he's already got a six, he said. So those are the ones I'm looking for. Huge piece of information for Johnston that, that others don't have that working together right there. I mean, that's, that is... He, knowing that, that his buddy's doing the same thing and is cracking him and has caught a six pounder, you might as well just give him a shot in the arm right there. Mm -hmm. Other guys, Gagliardi or, or, or Glenn Brown that, that's working solo down there, they don't have, you, you know, it's just um, the, the speed of the information flow amongst, amongst some of these young guys is, is, is one of those things that I just can't stress enough. I know I harp on it all the time, but uh, you look at you had the Johnstons and the McMillans, both sets of brothers in the top 10 at Okeechobee. And this time around, you have Little Mac, Johnston, and Gussie in the top 10. Um, yeah, tried dragging a worm here for a couple casts. That's painfully slow, but there's gotta be a few fish left here. They're just not eating.
I like throwing this on Power Pro. Just you can feel the bite so much better. You can feel the grass and pull it out a little better. Anytime I can use braid, I I try to get away with it. But you definitely need a mono leader on this, just because this water is all clear. And I'm no expert on the Harris chain, but to give you an idea, you can probably see three or four feet down in this water. And I don't think this lake's ever been this clear, and it's due to all the hydrilla that's all out through the middle of this lake cleaning it up. And uh, as you can tell, and I'm sure if you guys have been talking about it, it's changed the pattern of these fish. And uh, personally, I think a lot of these fish are spawning out deeper now too. They don't have to go up the canals or right against the bank anymore to spawn. They can spawn out in five, seven feet because the sun can penetrate. And I think some of these big fish people are catching are actually spawning in the sparse hydrilla. Not here in particular, we're in 12 feet, but just out from the Kissimmee grass, if you get a hard bottom. And my one spot I caught a couple fish on day two is that scenario. And I'm not positive, but I have a funny feeling they're spawning. And I don't think the replenishing is the problem. So. Hoping to see some birds start diving because they're like flares. You see that? There's some bass around. Did he say something about the bass spawning deeper because of the clear water and hydrilla? One more cast with the old worm. Now with that... I wonder where I got all that from. <laughs> <laughs> and our information source has been revealed. And supporting that, but going the opposite way is uh, is Glenn Brown down in South of Popka. Mm -hmm. Dirty water. And those fish, shallow. very shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Light penetration, a huge key in this sport. Sometimes it's uh, one of those overlooked things. And another interesting stat is it took 10 more pounds to make the final cut, the top 10 cut, mm -hmm. than last year. So uh, a lot bigger fish being brought into scales this year. You know, the canals were a big factor, the mouths of the canals last year. But uh, this year, these anglers have real dial really dialed things in in a lot of different techniques as these fish have changed their patterns. And, uh, and we've gotten to witness some great catches. Couldn't really get them fired up this morning on a jerk bait like I wanted to. I had to catch most of them on a trap. And the bite shut down even quicker this morning. I only had a half hour and didn't get a good bite. So. We're gonna keep moving along here and go up here 50 yards and then I'm gonna go on top of this hydrilla, kind of on the backside. It gets a little sparse. And I lost a big one there the first day. Caught one or two small ones there at the end of the day yesterday, so it's worth a try. Now over to Gussie. Official leader right now. We're entering the head scratching period for these two guys here. It's been mm -hmm. fast and furious this morning, but this is where things start to really uh, go away. Well, 
All those bats have been eating all morning long. They're somewhere having to take some antacid, I, uh, probably. It's laid up in the recliner now. Uh, going pretty good. Um, I'm probably sitting better right now than I have any other days. Uh, I got, uh, obviously I got one big one this morning and I got a couple other solid ones over three pounds and then a couple little guys that I got, a, got you know, lots of time left to try and upgrade. So things are going pretty good. Um, just about how it's been all week, you know, you grind it out out here and you, you go sometimes an hour, or hour and a half, you don't get a bite and then you get a little flurry or you get a big one and that's just how it's been. So I'm pretty confident that I can, you know, get a couple more good bites here today. So I'm happy. I just pulled back up right now to the spot where I had a pretty good flurry this morning. I probably caught 10 or 15 fish in a few minutes, so I'm sure there's a few around. This one has been pretty, this one was, there was a big pack of them here the last day of practice, and then I didn't catch them here the first couple days, and then yesterday they were kind of back again, so they just move around out here, I guess. Gussie's one of the few anglers in this top 10 field that have had a very consistent first three days. Uh, 17, 15, day one, 17, nine, day two, 20, uh, 20 and a half on day three, and actually increasing his weight each day. Where a lot of these anglers, big weight, then a little bit of a stumble, big weight, you know, kind of up and down, where Gussie just seems like he's been even keel putting things together. Uh, another guy that has a similar uh, three-day resume is Jared McMillan. <laughs> These guys helping each other out and really uh, piecing things together. Pretty awesome to be able to just put them down out here in this deep water. Wow, he's in 15 feet in February in Florida. And the spot lock will work fine on the Ultrex as well, but I just... A lot, there's a hole here and I just, I want to be able to, you know, cast downwind and just anchoring up like this seems to be the most efficient, efficient thing for this, this particular spot anyways. Just you know, the way I want to set up on it. There's a lot of, there's topped out hydrilla over here and uh, for some reason there's a pretty good little hole here and it's just a lot sparser stuff and it's been a bit of a sweet spot and just kind of got lost and drifted over this thing and found it and I guarantee you there's a batch of fish around here somewhere within casting range of me right now. Oh, I just got mm. drilled. Come on. I don't know how they miss it sometimes like that. Hit it so hard. Come on, baby. It 
is all on the line right now for every one of these top 10 anglers, including this guy right here, Jeff Gustafson, trying to get every last fish he can and a shot at the up to $125,000 payday that Chris Jones will be awarding to one of these 10 anglers at four o'clock this afternoon. Bring him to me. Gussie seems like he's in the zone right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's missing bites. Like, they're just nipping at it. So he just feels, it feels like any second, he's going to put another five-pounder in that live well. The momentum, the confidence. He's We're relaxed. Still rolling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a... 7.5 4 power G Loomis NRX rod for this and it's it's base it's kind of a flipping stick actually it's a pretty stiff rod for throwing these baits on but I like it because if I make a long cast like that the, I caught like a seven and a half the first day and I made a long cast and I probably had like three cranks into it and got the bite so I want to be able to set the hook you know way out there and then also, when I hit that hydrilla, I want to rip this thing out of it. And if you use too, if I'm using too soft of a rod, it just doesn't rip that bait out of the grass as good. So that's been a pretty, uh, pretty important thing for me the last few days. 20 pound fluoro. Um, this is a Shimano Corrado 8.2. So fast reel. Um, and also, just the way that I'm fishing this thing, ripping it and yo-yoing it, you're going to have a lot of slack in your line. So I like that fast reel just to be able to pick it up. And, and uh, you know, if you're just straight casting and winding a chatterbait, I think you want to use like a 6.4, 7.1, a little bit of a slower retrieve just because it's this is pretty fast. But uh, for just for the way that I'm fishing it out here, this is a pretty sweet setup. Come on. I did, uh, kind of a sidebar note, I did hear back from Blake Nick. He said ha he has been watching the old man and his worm dragging skills. He's pretty impressed with that, and uh, he also wanted to give a, a shout out to his old roommate there, Gussie. He says, hey, bud. Rob's usually never at a loss for words, so does he have any, any, uh, any questions or... Anybody want to know anything? Yeah, I want to know more about how you guys share all that information <laughs> amongst you, amongst amongst you young guys, and and it, how it always puts you all on top of the leaderboard. It's really impressive. I'd love to have a, a you had to get into that. I know I've got thing. lots lots of friends and family and people up north that have been sending me messages and watching this weekend. So I sure appreciate all of it. That's uh, it's pretty awesome. A lot of, there's a lot of bass, great bass fishing up in Canada and a lot of good anglers. So it's, uh, a lot of us follow all this, this stuff too. And 
And uh, for anybody that wants to get out of the hot, hot weather in the south in the summer, our summer weather is incredible. And we've got some of the best smallmouth fishing in the world up on Lake of the Woods and Rainy Lake. And in northwestern Ontario, where I live, you can pretty much throw a topwater all day and catch like 100 bass. It's, it's awesome. Is our Canada screen. In the one and two current positions here. Chris Johnston leading day two, leading day three. And now Gussie has overtaken him. But like we talked about earlier, both these guys uh, actually Gussie's kind of talked about catching him in flurries all throughout the day. He hasn't had as much of a, uh, a lull as Chris Johnson has during the, that meat of the day. So we'll definitely see here in a bit uh, Chris Johnson making some changes. You know, he has some theories. He's always going to have some working theories going on. And when this bite, when he decides the bite is, is over and he doesn't have much more going in these little areas and the offshore stuff, He's going to make some adjustments, and that's going to be fun to see what he does, because that's where, that's where you learn a lot about what's going in the minds of these pros and how they make these big-time adjustments. Bit this morning, but it's unreal how many fish bite I've, I've had in the last couple of days bite it, like right here, right at the boat. And I don't know if they're following it or if they're just, that's just by coincidence or what. But So you hit the grass like that, and you just kind of rip it off. And a lot of bites come right after you do that, too. But it's, it's deep out here. I mean, I'm in 12 feet of water, so you wouldn't, a chatterbait probably wouldn't be the first choice for fishing out here, but it's pretty much that or a trap for, you know, creating a reaction in this hydrilla. And it's almost, the reason I started throwing this was it, it's almost too, too clogged up to fish a trap in a lot of these spots. Like you're just constantly getting hung up this chatterbait goes through it a little better. And then over the last few days, it's just evolved into this yo-yoing, ripping it deal. And there's one, that feels all right. Mm. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> wow. How do you like, like that, that for live? That's a That's a fumble recovery right there. <laughs> Total fumble recovery. All right. we... <laughs> It was a fat Gussie. football squirming on the deck, and Gussie was ready. I think this guy is going to be next to go. That could have been $125,000 squirming around on there. We're on spot lock. <laughs> I'm soaked right now. It was worth it. Good thing I'm not wearing a white shirt. Oh, we're getting there. We're picking our way up. I'd like to see a slow motion replay of that one. Yeah. One more little baby to get rid of. Uh, Hopefully well, with that. another giant. There we go. Have they, a chance at yeah, this watch thing. this. Maybe. A good fish. I mean, this cold. Yes. It comes loose right here. Oh. Oh. I mean, <laughs> wow. 
bear oh hug that God. sucker. That's a three pounder. Goodness. <laughs> Piece of grass. All there, right. And I, I was just sort of following it back down and he just drilled it when it was sinking. I mean, he snatched that thing right. Ugh. Some of those uh, Saskatchewan fish snatching skills. And that was that was pretty close to the boat too. That one almost ri uh, rivaled Big Max. Uh, yeah. He he didn't completely go swimming for that one though, so we'll let we'll let Big Mac keep that one. He, he still wins that, but that was uh, for Gussie. That might have been a bigger deal right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could oh, very well be so the one. Them are like, I'm flipping them in, and they're coming off. <sighs> I guess if they get in the boat, that's all that matters. But you certainly don't want to lose one after it it comes actually into the boat that would be bad well i had one do that this morning already like a two and a half pounder that i could still use right now but i'm pretty sure i'm not going to need a two and a half pounder by the end of the day today got a good feeling Rob, mm. every time we go live to Gussie, he, he gives us a nice breakdown, says some pleasantries, addresses us personally in the uh, in nice. the studio here, and then he caps it off with fish catches. Last, the first time we went to him was with that five pounder, and then this time he catched a three and a half, comes off, squirms around the boat, and he's able to dive on it and uh, salvage the catch. That'll make the highlight reel uh, this afternoon, I'm sure, at, at weigh in, the fumble recovery at the at the gunnel of the boat. Now, so far today, we've had, uh, you know, Chris Johnston, he's talked about these early morning flurries. Uh, he caught them right away. They're back in the studio now. That's what we're looking for. Split screens and talking. <sighs> okay, and come on, baby. Here we go. Here's, here's a replay of Gussie. That was. And that's the limit. These are some things he's talked about moving around. He has all these spots he rotates. And what we talked about earlier is these guys are, are keying in, they're figuring out this bite more and more, and he has slowly upgraded his catch every it's single day. Three and, a half pounder. and it looks like he's right on pace to do the same thing today. Yeah, that schooling window no doubt lasted a yes. long time today. A lot more, oh, yeah. it went a lot longer than yesterday. That wakes you up. That's a chunk. Like that. Oh. White chatterbait. That's how you win the tournament, a batch of those things. Mm. That's awesome. Could be a prophetic statement right there. That's how you win the tournament. Mm -hmm. Now, so Gussie really uh, in the zone right now. Um, Chris Johnston kind of on the same pace as he was yesterday. He's got those fish early morning, and we'll see what, uh, what changes he makes today. But then we've got still Glenn Brown fishing down south, uh, slow start. But, Rob, should we be worried? I mean, uh, with the bite we've talked about, it's a later thing, but it's hard to be patient when it's that final day. So what, what are we going to see out of Glenn Brown? Yeah, let's not forget, Glenn Brown's put in a lot of time to get down there. The long boat run, he has to leave early. And those guys up on Harris, both Gussie, and Johnston has said there is another flurry that happens in the afternoon right about the time check-in. They get about 30 minutes or so of the secondary flurry in the afternoon. Glenn Brown will be running his boat at that point, and those guys will have some, you know, a little bit more bonus fishing time if that second schooling flurry fires up in the afternoon. And it, it just, um, the offshore guys look like they can do no wrong right now. Absolutely, and you cannot count out Anthony Gagliardi, former Force Wood Cup champion, has put together a limit. He is, he's not gonna die by some technique. He will keep making those adjustments. It's a matter of time before he figures it out, and if he can do it uh, before the day ends, uh, people will be worried for sure. Anyway, guys, we'll be right back with some more live coverage here on the Harris Chain of Lakes. Hopefully we'll see some more big catches out of this guy. I know we're gonna see a lot more action coming up. Do not go anywhere.
baby. This one. Welcome back, FLW Live on the Harris Chain Lakes, brought to you by Lowrance. Here is a look at some of our anglers that are fishing today for that $125,000 payday from Canada, Jeff Gustafson, the man in the lead right now. And Here. this guy, Tony Demetrius, the old man, the old he man. has coined himself, yeah. and it's tough to watch, but it's hard to look away mm -hmm. because he's slow, methodical. It could be a little bit, uh, you know, boring. But nope. then he breaks it up with a six pounder, yeah. and so it's like you don't uh, you don't want to leave because you know at any moment this guy could just make big big leaps. Yep. When he sets the hook, you better pay attention. <laughs> there you go. That's the scene. That's the the, the storyline for Glenn Brown making the long runs. He has gone away from the field. He's an hour and a half each way, all the way down to go flip south to Paca. His bite always gets better throughout the day, so it's one of those things that we're gonna keep checking in on him to see where he's at with things. Here's a guy taking a risk today. Gagliardi moving towards the canals, hoping to make some of those uh, spawning fish that he saw yesterday pay off big for him again. Looks like he's got something he's looking at right there and he's pitching at it, so he's got a couple more hours of that good sun that has finally poked out and uh, another couple of seven pounders out of those canals puts him back in it. And you don't get uh, that title of former Forestwood Cup champion for not taking risks. That's right. And uh, when Gagliardi, when he gets bored or he feels like something ain't working, he's going to change it until it does work. And I wish I could we're going to see I was sitting on like an eight pounder. <laughs> but uh, at this point, this two pounder is looking pretty good. <laughs> We've been here about 20 minutes, so. And I'm not going to spend too much more time on it because I know in the grand scheme, this one really doesn't mean a whole lot. I need big ones. That's a problem with sight fishing. You always say there was one... a there was a big female right out in front of this bed yesterday. Uh -huh. I was hoping that this was one of the one of the few that I saw in here yesterday. Um, I did hear the the drone in the background. Yeah. That might be interfering with our uh, service right now. Oh, I can see the bass oh, right yeah. there. All right. And you know what? That's a good sign for Gagliardi, Rob. Mm -hmm. Although that wasn't the, the big one he wanted right now, um, the sun's coming up. Mm -hmm. Things are warming up. up. We're even able to see in the water, so that uh, things could be shifting towards him. That is bad. Yep, seems like when you get the drone in the air, you get a little bit of break up on your signal. <clears throat> but that water, I mean, you can see the blue skies reflecting in the water mm -hmm. right now. It is a totally different scene than we were seeing Gagliardi earlier. Yeah, he said this one doesn't really count for much, so I'm fixing to leave it. But it's funny how quickly that turns personal with one of those fish. <laughs> <laughs> It's only two pounds, I need bigger, I need to move on, I'm just gonna leave it, but after a while, it's kinda like, you know what, I, I don't really appreciate you not cooperating with me, and uh, you just stick around and catch it for spite, burn up another 30 minutes. A little bit of free screen. I think we're going to uh, jump over here. We'll be checking back in with Gagliardi in a minute. Um, but, like, the way things are going with him, I feel like there's a little different momentum going right now. He has a little different uh, look to him. And so we come back to him. I think, I think we might see a little action. Here's the other guy we didn't see. 
in that whip. Chris Johnston started the day in the number one spot doing things very similar to Gussie. So this could, uh, if, if he picks it up again, if he finds another uh, flurry of fish, he could take, he could snatch the lead right back from Gussie in a heartbeat. Also on the unofficial leaderboard there, you've seen John Hunter climb up into the top five there. We haven't heard anything about John Hunter. Apparently he's uh, in Little Lake Harris and uh, throwing a jerk bait offshore around grass. Kind of the same, same kind of pattern we've seen with Johnson and Gussie. Uh, however, getting it done over in a Little Lake Harris. Once Glenn Brown gets fishing again down there, we saw him running when we came back from break. We'll be checking him out. Um, looking at the unofficial leaderboard, he has two fish now, one that's uh, just under two pounds, but then one that's a four pounder. Mm -hmm. And seeing that is a little bit of a sign that uh, things may be heating up for him down there. I think I missed him when I got him to actually open his mouth. I think I'd have caught him pretty quick if I hadn't missed him that very first time. You guys can see that fish, see that clearing. So you see that lighter spot down there? That's the bed. Those bass fan off their beds and then they guard it. And the males are usually the more aggressive ones, which is what, uh, which is what Glenn Brown gave us a great clinic on yesterday and hoping he gives us more of that today. It's killing me. I gotta go. This is great footage right now. It is. It's also a great example of how bed fishing can completely hang you up. Yeah, I mean this one. I, I mean I know better. I mean it's not a, it's not a big one. I mean I don't have much weight right now. He would definitely help me, but. It's not going to contribute to a 20-pound bag, which is what I'd have to have to have a shot to win. Gags already knowing what pace he needs to be on to have a shot at the lead here. Yeah, yeah. but he just he just said it himself. I, this is not going to do him any good. I know better. <laughs> He's having conflicts I, in his own mind yes, right now. I know better than to sit here and play with this fish, but this is how they tease you. Look at it. He's just, I mean, that fish is staring that bait down, <laughs> and it'll cause you to stay and stay, and 15 minutes goes by, and 20 minutes, and oh, look at, look 30 minutes. Oh, and swims off. <laughs> And we reset it and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Take the pass. And we set right back up. Oh, man. Now, he did say there was an eight pounder around with that male. Mm -hmm. There's a small chance that you catch the male and the eight pounder comes back into yep. the bed and locks on. Yep. So. And then there's times as he messes with this male enough. Uh, that female may just come, come sliding back, in yep. there as well that you didn't even see was under the dock or even mm -hmm. under your boat the whole time. He can't leave it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm okay with that though, because this is some great shots yeah. we're getting right now. We're going to look something a little bit different. Just amazing. Uh, we got a top 10 here. You're looking at a couple guys fishing offshore, a guy down flipping in two foot of water. Two minutes and we're gone. Two I minutes. want you to put the clock on I that. am. I'm doing that right here. <laughs> <laughs> put the clock on that. All right, so yeah, like at that time. Let's go. Nope. He didn't even do two. Oh, wow. Definitely going to make a, go make a stop by there here pretty quick. Oh yeah, 
That's a jumble. This is why I fished this spot. I'm hearing Gussie right now. And it sounds good. <laughs> I hear good audio out of Gussie. That may have been a replay, because that's what he was talking about earlier today. What's that? Yeah, I know, really. Yeah. As long as I can see it, that's all I care about. I don't think they care what color it is. Yeah, um, well, the sun come out, it's a little breezy, and uh, fish aren't biting for me. So it's about par, same as yesterday. So I'm trying a different bait. Um, to be honest, Gussie kind of put me onto this. And, there we go. Um, I, thought, I thought that's how that went. I haven't really been eating the jerk bait today, so I'm trying to trick one up with this. And I can throw the speed worm through here, but I really haven't got many big bites in the speed worm. I've caught some three pounders, but I really need to get one or two of those big ones. So I know they'll eat this chatter bait, so I'm gonna keep plugging away and hopefully uh, one of these times I hop it, I feel that thump and it's on. It's one of the best feelings, especially when you go three hours without a bite or something and you just watch your line jump. Caught some decent ones here. Uh, Koenig got a six and a half. I got a four. And uh, I've caught one or two three pounders. So they're around here. Just, I've never got many in this spot. Sorry for all the people watching, I'm not catching more fish. I want to catch them just as bad as they want to see some caught. I think later this afternoon I'll get a couple more uh, where I had that flurry kind of by the boat ramp. Just give it a break for a bit and I will head back there. I think it should be good for a couple more fish, just I haven't got any giants out of there. You said he's throwing him chatter baits though, right? Mm -hmm. I'm liking that uh, that retrieve he's got. He's got like the little double pump too. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of like get the blades, get the blade going, and then give it a little uplift. See, he gives it that tap tap. But it's so nice because you can feel every bite, and when you pull it up, you feel the chatter bait vibrating, and if you get a weed on it, you just snap it free. And I'm using a little heavier rod than. I would normally throw in a chatter bait. Um, this is a four power, so it's almost like a heavy action. And uh, the only reason is because this hydrilla in 10 feet is so thick. If you get one way out there, um, they're going right down the hydrilla and you're in trouble. So I got a little stiffer rod just to try and get them out. Hopefully we have that problem here soon.
looking at our unofficial leaderboard, Travis, you can kind of see the, how the momentum has gone today. Those guys fishing offshore, those guys that are on that schooling program have all moved up. Uh, Gussie, Johnston, uh, John Hunter, that's the same pattern he's working. Meanwhile, some of the guys that we feel like are on that more of that spawning, bedding type bite, uh, namely Glenn Brown, still has only two fish. Uh, Demetrius started the day with a bang, a six pounder, has yet to put another one in the boat. You, you, you see what I'm getting at there? The, the reloading of those shallow bedding type fish. Gagliardi's been trolling around the canal now that he said he saw uh, yesterday after he caught the five and the seven. He looked down the bank farther and saw some other big ones. Um, they're gone. Doesn't look like anything new's moved up. Substantial has moved, moved up for him. You, you're just starting to see where the separation's starting to occur, where the offshore bite has maintained, uh, continues to go the distance, and I'm afraid some of these shallower spawning type fish are running out of gas at this point. Chris Johnston and uh, Gustafson are both definitely supporting that theory. It does seem to be the yep. way things are going. And, yep. and if they get another flurry, like both of them have said, the end of the day, mm -hmm. they get one more shot at them. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the bass go on their second feed for the day, and, and um, that could be the, the real nail in the coffin for either one of these guys in terms of, you know, when, these, uh, when, when Gagliardi and Brown are running back, from where they are way down a popka way. Ah. Mm. I almost caught that one. Like yeah, I had one come right up to it like a five pounder. Mm. There too. That was a good one back there, though. Like I said, the betting thing's going away, Travis. Did, did you get that? Yeah. Did you understand that? Okay. Uh, That's a selfie stick right there. Mm -hmm. All bets are off. We got gag. We already scrambling around out there. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Dave's power pulled down. Looking around for that five pounder. What Gagliardi is doing right now is what I thought we would see five guys doing for the next two days. For the, when, when I saw this on the schedule, I thought that's what we'd be looking at for two days on live. That exact deal right there. One of those names being John Cox. Yes, that's right. I bet John Cox knows exactly <laughs> where that seawall is. That one's hard to see. He's not on a bright bed. And I had a hard time catching. That's the big one I caught off that bed yesterday. It's a bad angle because they're on that undercut. That one up there is one I'd like to catch. And I don't see a bed up there. Yeah, I don't think that's not where she came from, though.
That's ca I mean, that's a catchable fish there. I think it's a three pounder. But I'm gonna have to probably move the boat a little bit. I can't make a good cast on her from out here perpendicular to the seawall. Guy. That was way out there. Just a reminder to all you guys watching, you are tuned in to FLW Live, our final day four coverage of the second stop of the 2018 FLW Tour on the Harris Chain of Lakes brought to you by Lawrence. Now, if you are anywhere in the area of Leesburg, Florida, you've got to check out what we got going on over there at uh, Venetian Gardens on, at Ski Beach. We'll have the expo starting at 12. You can meet a lot of the pros. There's a lot of cool activities and vendors and things to do. And then, then we will be crowning a champion. You can watch it in person there over in Leesburg, or you can tune back into flwfishing.com and watch Chris Jones weigh him in at 4 p.m. And we will conclude this event and figure out who put the final pieces of this puzzle together. Travis wow. brother, bring him to me in this area and trying to catch Mr. Big. That would have been handy a few minutes ago when that <laughs> one almost flopped out of the boat. Part of, say that again. Can you talk to me about how being able to talk to other anglers and stuff? <clears throat> um, well, you know, yesterday and today, I've communicated with Chris a little bit. Chris Johnson, he's, he's leading. Um, we're pretty good buddies. and. Uh, so it's nice to be able to kind of compare notes and to see what's what's cooking. You know, I I got into a big school of fish at the end of the day yesterday, and um, 
he was fishing a couple hundred yards out from me and I called him in and he, he ended up getting a little upgrade, I think, but, uh, you know, as both of us want to win today for sure, but it's, you know, we, uh, we, we benefit from being able to sort of help each other and, and, uh, you know, we're both sort of, ho if, if, I know if I don't win, I certainly hope that he does today, so. It's, it's nice to get to be able to talk to each other and just kind of compare notes out here, so. He was fishing the spot this morning where the big school was like late yesterday afternoon and um, I kind of hit it first thing this morning and there was not, a, not much happening, but he caught some there earlier, but it didn't sound like any of them were real good ones, so. That kind of information between two competitors, obviously totally legal and uh, just goes a long, long way. Um, it's almost like, I, <clears throat> sometimes I compare it to the, the drafting in NASCAR among NASCAR mm -hmm. teams that get together and, and the, you know, draft in big packs and, and push each other to the front, um, help their teammates. And, uh, and, and today's game, as competitive as this sport is, that type of information exchange between uh, three or four or five guys, um, that is, uh, it, uh, it's invaluable. Uh, the the real-time information from your buddies like that, knowing uh, Johnson now knows Gussie caught a, a six, and uh, you know, it's not a kind of thing where Gussie pulls up and says, hey bud, I caught a six, and you're like, well, you know, I'm mad about that now. It's yeah, it's more like uh, good. That's what I need to hear. It helps me. It's just like turning the lights off. It's like a dark room. And it's those guys just they, they do that in practice. That's the part that is, um, you know. And I don't I don't know where their group is now. I know at one time you know it was Gussie and the McMillans, um, the Johnston brothers. I think uh, Jeff Sprague is in that a little bit as well. Uh, and their goal is to, is to make checks in these things. They all have one common goal. Get the $10,000 check, get the points, and get to the Forest Wood Cup. That is, that's what, and then if they end up in this position here, then all the better. It's hard to keep those groups together. At some point, usually there's a breakdown where somebody starts thinking the other guy's holding something out on them or, you know, he knew about something he didn't tell him about. But that core group that's been doing this for several years, there, there's, there's, there are certain groups of these guys that are able to keep this together. And it's really a special thing. I mean, if you, if you can keep this, this kind of information together, everybody keeps their head cool about it and nobody gets it. There's going to be times, I don't think Gussie, uh, I might be wrong about this. I don't, I don't know if he made a check down at Okeechobee. He might have been on the outside looking in. I, I don't know that for a fact. I didn't look it up. But now he's, you know, now he's, I mean, look where he is now. They know that there's going to be times where a guy gets left on the outside of that check line. But you can't get envious or upset about it. Yeah, you got to, you know, have, have a cool head about it and uh, keep keep divulging that information to your peers and staying in that communication loop. And y you heard what Johnston said, Gussie is the one that put me on this deal. And it happens not just here. This is, I mean, you see some groups of guys at the elite series doing the same thing. And um, it, it, it's very effective. And you know, that's not to say that the, the lone wolf type guys out there that do their own thing don't get their day in the sun too. Some people just can't deal with that, that much information coming at them. 
I think it's something that the younger generation is, is very proficient at. They just come from a, a different time frame of a lot of media coming at them at the same, a, at the same time. They're, a, they're able to kind of uh, pick that information apart, get what they need from it. It doesn't mess them up. Some of the, you know, the, more of the old school pros, um, getting a lot of information running through their head just pulls them in too many di different directions and rabbit holes. They're just better off putting the blinders on and going and doing what they do. A, a Glenn Brown type guy. That's a, that, you know, be a good contrast to that. Glenn Brown, uh, interesting you bring uh, Glenn Brown into this. I just got a report. He just caught his fourth fish of the day. And this right here, this just happened moments ago. Pretty nice. Bam. Rob, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems like Four it's pounders. been taking a little bit longer today to get this thing going, but mm -hmm. we had that cloud cover. We now look, it's sunny out there and things seem to be heating up for him. So we're going to stay live with him for a minute and see uh, if this is the magic hour for Glenn Brown. Caught one about four or five in here on the second day. Right in the middle of this whole mess. Fish are being a little bit crankier with me today. I've had a few bites that I've missed. Seems like in the last hour or so, started catching some. And when they bite, they, they, they own it. I've had them all hooked really good, and so I don't know if they just were kind of off this morning, out getting Sunday brunch, or what the deal was, but things are starting to tune up just a little bit. Sunday brunch. I sure could use a few more bites in a hurry, that's for certain. A couple big ones. One thing's for sure, at this point on the leaderboard, Chris Johnson has left the door open. Mm-hmm at 11 pounds, estimated 11 pounds for the day. Well, we talked about that yesterday too, yeah. I mean, at 17 he was, pounds. He said, I, you know what, I, I left room, I left mm -hmm. room. And that's, he definitely doesn't want to do that today. He had been concerned, one of his main concerns is having an off day. We've seen other people have that off day. His hasn't come yet. But like I said, he still believes in that rally in the, in the latter part of the day, has bailed him out a couple of times and helped him right there in the closing few minutes. But the door's certainly open. I mean, Glenn Brown's now moved into third, and he still has one more fish to fill his limit. He still, have a, he still has an opening in the live well. <laughs> He's a rough estimate at this point, only a couple of pounds back. Maybe three or four, maybe three pounds back. I believe this one's going to end up about like Okeechobee did. This will be decided here at the uh, final hour. Yeah, when we uh, we leave these anglers at 12:30, there's still going to be a lot of fishing left. I mean, we saw we saw it yesterday. Demetrius, he caught his big fish about an hour after we left him. So there yep. is uh, a whole lot of fishing left to do, and I, I can't wait to watch this weigh in at Chris Jones today. Um, hyping up this event. I mean, he's not going to have to do much hyping because there's going to be big fish being dropped in that bucket. Glenn will have about 
from now about uh, what kind of mode? No, he's see. not big, but he's a limit. Well, and this brings up what we got to see yesterday. A lot of guys haven't been able to see this yet out of Glenn Brown today. A little fish. Catch a little one. That's a good sign. There he is. Got a short stubby. We hope he has a nice big old fat girlfriend. Uh, what Glenn Brown was doing yesterday is he was uh, flipping towards high target areas. Um, oh, but he's yeah. a whole whopping 12 and a half inches. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so he's looking for. I will not it? judge him at the moment. He's a pound more than I had. Maybe I'll stick him in one of those big ones, bigger ones I get in there and make him disappear. He's got two hours to get this done. He's going to have to leave at about 1.30. Mm -hmm. So if he has a, you know, a good solid hour 20 back. Now what he just learned is that fish is most likely on a bed. So he can also then assume that that fish has a female on the bed as well. Flipping that little hole down. So I fish that every day just about. I've not caught a fish right there. So he's going to go straight back to that spot right now, and hopefully that female's there. Those males, those little bucks, are a lot more aggressive most of the time, so you catch them first, but that's a perfect telltale sign that there's some activity going on. He's circling back around here. And this has happened for him many, many times during this event that he's caught the small one, flips back in, catches the big one. Things are looking a little better than they were an hour ago. Still got about two hours and 45 minutes of fishing. Well, he's got more than I thought he did. Two and a half hours. A lot can happen in two and a half hours, especially in the afternoon doing this kind of stuff. I thought his trip down there was a little longer than that. This is just easy to watch right here. Mm -hmm. There's nobody at home right now watching this that doesn't want to be on the boat right next to Glenn just throwing whatever their favorite bait is. It looks like, looks like you could fish anything you wanted right there. And it looks like there should be a fish at every part of that. which can sometimes be distractions. Glenn really did a good job breaking down yesterday what he is tuned into. If you look at that, we've got dock pilings, we've got the floating boat there, we've got the, the reeds, the grass, there's so much there. Uh, to most anglers, every part of that looks good. You can't, you're not gonna be able to move through there quickly, but he is so honed into what he's looking for, those subtle little combinations of things that are the highest percentage areas, and that's all he looks for. That's how he just fished that area very quickly, a couple little flips, and on to the next spot. And then he'll move through some of these areas relatively quick like he just did. But then there are other times he doesn't get a fish, but he drops down his power poles and he will methodically fish it because he just sees a lot of little potential targets that are what he is looking for. Yeah, fish around those docks, uh, some people might be asking, why didn't he skip up under that dock? That was a nice dock he went by. That's not really the game right now. The, the, 
Docks are real good in Florida because the, the homeowners around those docks, they keep it cleaned out of weeds. It keeps, it breaks up the, like if those, those docks weren't there, that would just be a solid mass of vegetation in there. And, uh, you know, the, the, the impact there of, of having the dock shading it out and then the homeowners usually uh, cleaning out around the docks, keeping that area clean, makes those kind of weed line breaks that fish like to get around and spawn. It, you know, maybe if it was summertime or in the fall, those fish would want to get actually under those docks. But it's this time of year, it's not so much that they're under those docks positioned in that shade. They're just using that area where it's all cleaned out around the dock. And they might set up a bed on a piling or something, but not necessarily get mm -hmm. in the dark shade. Of a... And there could very much be a fish underneath that dock. There's obviously other fish in these areas he's going by, but these anglers are finding their pattern. It's what's working for them. He's finding out what the high probability areas are, what fish are the most active, most likely to bite, and which ones are the bigger fish. And that's what he's really honed into here. And it's just, he has just, he's talked about it yesterday and it was so interesting listening to all the little elements, uh, especially just the depth. If he was shallower than two feet, he'd go, nope, 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 nope don't like yeah. it here. He'd get a little too deep, nope, don't like deep. it there. And it was just, wouldn't even waste his time with it. And so uh, we're talking about depth, Rob, let's look at, uh, I mean, contours and these different little subtle changes that we've been looking at all, all week have been a huge factor in every one of these anglers game from shallow to the guys that are all the way out fishing offshore. Yeah, looking at Glenn there, I thought that's what we'd see a lot of this week. Uh, looking at Gaglior in that canal, I thought that's what we'd see a lot of, uh, but that hadn't been the case. It's been offshore contours, and fortunately, um, when that comes into play, We've got the Lowrance HDS 16 carbon unit here, and we can take a look at, um, I, I, once again, I want to reiterate, uh, we get a lot of questions about these offshore places and what they look like. And it, the, the best way I can put it is to find the biggest flat. You can see you got the lake here, and then it, the, the more I zoom in, uh, you, you, I wish there was some way I could point to, to, the, to these big contour lines. and in in the back yet. So you can use, see the crosshair. Where the crosshair is now, it's a big flat. This is what you're looking for right here. Anywhere you have a big giant flat and some close contour lines coming together. That right, right in there would be what you'd call a trough or, or almost like a kind of a ditch leading back into that flat. Or right out here on this point, this big flat point. This area right here is been where one of the primary areas for the leaders. Uh, Chris Johnston's been on this spot uh, a couple times, as well as uh, Gussie. It is, it, when you look at that, that's exactly the, the kind of place that you like. The huge grass flat back up in here. All in this is grass where, where, where I'm moving across here, but right out here where the brake lines are, that's where stuff starts to scatter. That's where the grass scatters out, gets thinner as it gets deeper. You get in a little trough like this back here, get a little wind blowing in there against this matted grass, shad spawn type areas, shads get pinned up in there. Textbook, it, that is a textbook schooling place. Only thing is you usually see that in like May or June here in Florida, we're getting a little early treat of it right now. Absolutely, and, and for you guys watching at home that, that don't understand those contour lines, if, you, if you've never seen those lines or don't really know what those mean, you need to figure it out. Go online, look it up. Those are so important. Those anglers, months in advance, looking over their mapping and, and making a guesses and, and really learning the lakes through those different contour lines and stuff. And a lot of people just think those uh, depth changes are for uh, you know deeper lakes. It's those uh, real steep uh, changes and things are the most important. Not, not true. In these shallow water lakes, those small little uh, changes and things make all the difference which you've seen to, uh, during this tournament. Uh, that's what they're right. talking about. Is it's, it literally is all about those different uh, contour depths that you're talking about. Uh, so guys, we are approaching our final break. But right now, let's take a look at our leaderboard. Let's see where the top 10 stand right now. Uh, Jeff Gussie Gustafson. Still on top, about 19 pounds. This guy, I love it. He's having a big day. And all big, smiles. Big He's enjoying and living up every minute of it. Glenn Brown getting back, uh, working his way back up with that nice little four pounder he caught there. Remember, Glenn still has one more blank space in the live well. One three pounder now, one three or four pounder, and suddenly he's threatening to leave. He still has a blank. 
We did catch the limit, but that one was really small. We okay. did catch yeah, that that's right. Little, yeah, the, the little tiny one. He yeah. said, I think he said I'm 12 and a half inches. That. Yes, I'm not yes. counting that. So, he, he doesn't need to bring that in. Yeah, so that 13.8 is a soft 13.8 is what we're talking about. There's a lot of room to grow on that one. Uh, John Hunter, uh, you know, has a good limit. The one thing is he started way down the day, so he's going to need a couple big fish to really have a chance at uh, holding up uh, that check. Shout out to Buddy Chris Gross Jones. there. Mm -hmm. Buddy Gross is moving up. He's fishing offshore too. He's got some offshore grass going on. He's moved up to his best position of the week there. Yep. Tony Demetrius, uh, we're always expecting to see another big fish out of him. But anyway, guys, lots, well, lots more fishing action because our last segment always uh, ends with a little bit of fun. I think we're yep. going to see some more fish catches here. But don't go anywhere. We're going to take one last break and then we will continue with more FLW Live. Welcome back. It's our last hour of uh, live coverage. Not the last hour for these anglers. But let's look at a map right now, Rob. Here is where our anglers are spread out throughout this tournament. Yeah, this is kind of the starting positions of everybody. This is their first stops of the morning here. So um, there it is. You can see Lake Harris is the primary player of the Derby here. And um, by then, Gagliardi had moved to, you know, down the canal there. Glenn Brown started in Apopka. Uh, nobody was in Little Lake Harris at that point, but you can see the cr the crowd around the the everything's kind of around that 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 end of the lake and the graphic there. Some of those mo those places that look a little closer to shore than than what's represented there. A lot of those places are farther offshore than that. So, mm -hmm. especially Chris, Chris Johnson's place, you know places right in the middle right there. Yep, yeah, and if you looked at uh, McMillan in that little lake, uh, mm. we didn't even know that was uh, accessible. And we really looked at a map yesterday and, it, yeah. and there is a long canal that gets him back there. And his fish were coming late yesterday. Mm -hmm. We announced a lot of fish oh. being caught That was almost a in our cute. last segment. And Gussie, I think he only catches his fish when we go live with him. Yeah. Okay. We could let Gussie know we're done talking in here. We're ready to listen to him. Ready? Well, I'm still grinding it out here on my uh, my big fish stretch where I, I got my big one this morning. Um, about 20 minutes ago. I had a nice one, not a giant, but probably a four pounder come up and eat my bait right at the boat with like a three feet of line out. Pull thing disappeared and I went like that and it just came shooting right back out of its mouth. So no luck on that. I mean like right at the boat too. But I don't think I really stuck it. So I kind of came back up. It, it seems like it's it's a perfect amount of wind really for drifting along here because I I just use the trolling motor to kind of straighten out my line a little bit here and there but for the most part it's just pushing me along pretty nicely. If it, and I tried kind of coming back into it and it just it, it makes a lot of noise just the boat sort of banging on the waves and trolling motors running all the time so this way it's a little easier just to sort of sneak along if you go with the wind. But I've been kind of making most of my passes on this drift. I'm, I'm really riding the, the shallower part of the hydro, the, or the higher hydrilla um, on this drift. So that last fish I just had come up, it was almost right over top of a pretty thick clump of it. So just feel like this area I got a shot at a really big one and that's what I need right now. Big time. But we still got lots of time. I'm gonna put this thing in front of one here at some point. A lot of talk today about drifting with the wind, Travis. That's, you know, Demetrius talked about that 
on his uh, in his area he's got letting the wind just so you don't got to touch the troller motor don't have to be noisy just a perfect wind to you know kind of push you along in a nice fish even fishing speed it allows you to be a little bit more stealthy over the last few days bite it right at the boat like I don't it's weird this deep of water and I just don't know if they're all like that high in the water column and they or if they've been following it for a while and it's just that up thing that makes them triggers them to bite I know that happens a lot with smallmouths at home when you're using jerk baits and stuff as soon as you get near the boat and you pull that bait up they they smoke it but But I don't, I'd rather they bite way out there so you got just a lot more give in your, your setup and that's where the stiff rod that I'm using might, might hurt me a little bit. I, although I haven't really been losing any fish other than that one just never got the hook, unfortunately. But, uh, but I'd rather sort of hook them, get a good bite way out there and fight them in rather than ha hook them right here and go nuts right at the boat. Come on. That was a guy that oh, could. That was grass. I felt like a fish for a second. The guy that could get back in this thing the fastest right now is Tony Demetrius. Uh, just about everybody else has filled out his limit except for him. He has one fish that weighs six pounds. He got four blanks in the live well that he needs to fill. Four. He, he's got four, four blanks, and he's roughly, you know, estimate. Uh, about eight pounds back. Mm -hmm. Wow, what four two pounders would do for him right now. Yep. And you got to wonder what's going through his head too about how much he's only got one fish. Now, I would say if we talked to him right now, he would be very confident he's going to hook another big one. But you got to think you don't want to come in with three slots open. You've got to fill out that limit. So, is there anything going through his mind whether he needs to uh, get? fill out with a couple smaller fish, one to two pounders. Gosh, right now, just a, like a handful of, of two pounders mm -hmm. or some pound and a halfers would even, uh, you know, you'd hate to get to weigh in today with one six pounder, you got the right bite and you and you couldn't, you know, get. You couldn't uh, fluff it with some twos. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and lose by seven pounds, eight pounds. That, that uh, and the way he started this morning, I really thought he, you know, he's getting ready to rock it lots of them um, I think if you, you know it's very easy to go for an hour or two and not get a bite and I think that's probably deterred a lot of people from from committing to this and doing it you know a lot of the guys that maybe found one of those little sweet spots probably got on it a little better and it's easy to miss them that's for sure He is doing something different. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So we we're just talking about Tony Demetrius. Um, you know how he only has that one big fish in the live well, nothing else to go with it. And we just saw him. Uh, he looked like he just flipped. Yeah, he moved up. And he is shallow. And look, yeah. the trees. Remember, he oh, talked yeah. about the tree line. He is at, right man. in the tree line. He's moved up. He's figured out what he figures is pre-spawn fish have now gone to the bank, and now he's going to the bank yeah. to see if they're there. And he may finish out the day out a little ways. But if he can go in and he sees a couple, two, three pounders, it's worth mm. where Gagliardi didn't want to spend his time, knew he couldn't afford to. It, it may be worth his while to, to pull a couple of those little twos and threes off beds and then go back out and look for that, that six to eight pounder. like put slack in it.
I think that steely demeanor out of Demetrius has kicked into high gear. Mm -hmm. uh, he was pretty talkative there after the six pounder this morning and now he's uh, bearing down pretty hard. This is a good side-by-side -side view here. You got number one spot, Jeff Gustafson, number seven spot, unofficially, uh, Tony Arches Demetrius. Spook. Yeah, I'm trying to do some bed fishing, but they're not, they're not staged, they're not sitting on them. They're, they're too spook. Hmm. So, I'm wasting time. Wasting my time. And we, when you look down the numbers below them, um, Tony started the day in second place, so... There were just three, looked like uh, possibly bucks. I was just trying to get some more fish in the well. Exactly. At this time. He's eight pounds out of the lead right now. Mm. With and four fish that he could fill. Yes, two pounders, and he yeah. literally, all he catches, he gets four two-pounders, he has a shot to win this thing. That's an interesting, you know, it, that, that's a... But no dice. I'm not going to waste time. That's an interesting proposition. We see spooked. very much of. A lot of times we're down to the wire with everybody has a limit and the guy's looking for one upgrade, one upgrade. It's not, or where do you got four blanks you can fill and you're just seven pounds out of winning the tournament. I mean... Huh? Yeah, I think so. If I was here sooner. But, yeah, I, I think it would have. Travis, there's been a little update, uh, interesting movement uh, on the leaderboard out of uh, John Hunter. Apparently, I believe I'm looking at a, a seven pounder he caught <laughs> on the leaderboard. He's now moved up to first. I don't know if that's a mistake or what. Wow. Nope. Not a mistake. It just happened. And Hello, I'm, John Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned that earlier. I, look, he started, wow. the day, he started the day quite a ways back. He mm -hmm. was, you know, he caught his limit early, put some good ones together. So it, it looked like he was high on our leaderboard, but realistically, a lot of guys there filling their limits was going to push him back down. He needed a big fish to stay in that end. There he it did is. Just that. Oh. Championship Sunday, that's the kind of fish it takes. What what place did he start in? Tenth this morning? Wow. Yes. And that's why it's so important to make the cut. Survive. You can't mm -hmm. win if you are not fishing Friday. He, uh, he snuck into that final 10th spot right there wow. and got to fish another day and is making the best of it. The JT Kenny almost pulled that off. Last year he came in, he was in ninth or 10th way down there and came in with a huge bag the last day. Jumped way up there, scared the, scared scared everybody in victory lane. Wow. And uh, John Hunter, only thirteen pounds day one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so, yep. and then, uh, he, I mean, that was, that was good for about, in the set, about 70th place. And next day comes back, weighs in 21 pounds, jumps all the way up to make the cut into 18th place, and then does just enough uh, to make the 10th slot. And now, need that sunlight. it's go big or go home today.
Those top four guys are really tight. All of them are really wadded up right there. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh. Mm. He hit it kind of coming towards me. I was fired up. Still catching some, though. Yes, he definitely been giving us the entertainment on live today. Yeah. He might get a little flurry of them fired up here. Sometimes you get one caught and it gets them all chewing down there. Okay. Well, the fans are going to get a thrill at weigh-in today, taking a look at a seven-pounder from John Hunter. I know Chris Jones is down at the weigh-in right now licking his chops. Yeah. Man, he loves seeing stuff like this. There is a up. lot of question marks. Every, every one of these ten guys uh, has a potential at this thing, and that's going to make for a great weigh-in. Um, I can't wait to be uh, watching this here come 4 o'clock. I'm pretty sure that John Hunter will be asked to show his... Two best man. Down to Glenn Brown. He's got a squeaker he needs to get rid of bad. Yeah. And actually, looking at this, at his unofficial weight, he's got two fish that are pretty small. He's got one that's 12 and a half inches. That one definitely needs to go. But he's got one also that's about a pound and three quarters. And he has more time to fish than what mm -hmm. I thought. So that's good news. I mean, he's still in fourth place right now. Um, uh, you know, roughly about three pounds out of the lead. So what, another angler that is so much upside to just catching a couple decent fish. Right now, we're at noon. We're midway through the day here. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. Bye-bye, one-pounder. Did he hear us talking? <laughs> a little better. <laughs> I would like to see that next to that little 12 and a half inch squeaker, and I'll tell you that's a uh, lot better. Probably a three. Thanks. Take a good look at that right now, and then watch what he throws outside the boat. All right. Slow going, but we're chipping away. Now I can just catch a real giant. Look at him. <laughs> A little one's lively. There we go. Yeah. Look at this. Look how they're spitting up. Whoa. It's well, almost the size of the one he just threw out, man. That's a good call. It's like a shiner. That one about took it away from us. I don't know who spit it up. I was, I was picking up there, and I was getting ready to pull it out, and I see it kind of everything raised up. He come and got it. Trying to take it away from him, I guess. I thought it was a giant too for a second. I 
I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Unofficially, it is. four guys within this a pound of each I other. Pound and a half. I know I haven't done any practice it or anything. That's that's just what I got to do. I got to stay off that water. I fish for the most part. I mean, as we get closer to 80 pound limits, to four day limits, you you are you would expect to see somebody a front runner. Uh, you know, when you have this many yep. big fish, uh, a lot of guys having big fish come off and everything. There's one guy that's just been able to connect the most times and, and be able to start uh, separating himself from the pack. But as we watch every swing of this rod, just changes the leaderboard, just flip flops everything. That place right there he's at, there's a little bit of a transition there. You can see the vegetation, that emergent vegetation. The, all of that over there on his left shoulder is all the same. You see that, Travis? It's mm -hmm. all of, uh, it's all a, uh, 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 but all, all that over on his, I'm sorry, on his right shoulder is all the same, but over here to the left, see how it's all mixed? He splits it right there. Right, he splits it. That, for folks that have never fished in Florida, that is the equivalent of a, a transition that's like uh, when you're fishing, you know, lakes where it turns from a, a gravel or, or a, you know, more of a pea, pea rock or a, a gravel to, to boulders, you know, rock transition on the bank from clay to rock. That's a, that right there is, in Florida, it's the same thing. Something changes there in the bottom. Uh, something happens between where he is over the right shoulder there. All that's just the same, same, same. It's just flat reeds down through there. And back here on his left, it's, you see the last of the arrowheads and, and it's got a little bit more green in there. That's a perfect transition place right there. And you can tell he likes it by how many casts he's putting in here. Something changes there. No, he's going in. He's, he's going to go to that final <laughs> seam right there, Rob. Mm. <laughs> There's a hole right in there where everything comes together. Ooh, I get chills. This is a down to the wire photo finish. You are not gonna wanna miss this live way and I can't reiterate enough. Come four o'clock, wherever you guys are at, you've gotta tune back in to flwfishing.com and see how this thing ends. It's just like there's, everyone is just exchanging blows with each other right now. It's an all out brawl and we're gonna leave them swinging Look how he goes down there just skipping all that sameness. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. He is total, I love this. He's totally fishing off a of visual. He has not fished any of this before. He's totally going off of what he's seeing right now. Look at him, he's skipping all that. That's just too much of the same, not enough break, not enough mix. It looks like he's fishing the last little tail end of it. Absolutely, visually patterning the fish right there in Florida. That is, I mean, you're looking at the best in the game do that. He's gonna come back to that other transition right there. Yep. Right there, see the change? Yeah, he just said, uh-huh, that looks good. Yep. Love this game right here.
all fresh water for Glenn. Scoping it out for the first time, fishing by the seat of his pants. Looking for the changes, the transitions, anything different. For everyone watching at home right now, look at the scrolling uh, ticker along the bottom and look at those weights. You got John Hunter unofficially 75-2, Gustafson 74-13, Brown 74-7, and then Chris Johnson 74-4. You're going to have eight, 75 pounds of weight and people will be separated by ounces. Yep. And those are all just from eyeballing fish. There's nothing official about those weights. Those are just guys looking at it real quick, making yeah. a fast guess and, and putting them up on the board. So I mean, you could have pounds of uh, a differential on that. So you could put basically those top four in any order you'd like right now, and it would be a good guess. Yeah. Ooh, a little different change of weather uh, with Chris right now. The breeze is picked up out there. Look at that little spot on the left side that mm -hmm. Brown is honing into. I saw a little clump of arrow. See that clump of arrowheads in, in the in the group right there? Oh, ooh. That makes you want to fish right there. That's the mix. See that hole in there? Oh. The winning fish ought to come out of that that right there. Perfect. Mm. Chris Johnson swung uh -oh. and missed, but it came up. Uh oh. And that's looking like a good fish. It'll like help. Three pounder. Wow. This Two is a blow by blow three. here. Huge for him right there. It's actually fun when you're catching some. Wow. Nice chunk. I mean, the shape on those things, I, I just, they might, those might be post-spawn bass that spawned two months ago, but man, I, you know what a post-spawn bass look, he's all beat up and ragged mm -hmm. and bloody and half his tail's gone. Those things are yeah. just beautiful. Those look fresh and lively. That's a good call for him. And like you said, a good sign, Rob. Uh, this is not the time, the window that he was yes. catching fish last couple bonus. days. Yep. Yes. A little and bonus so, for him here. Yep. Could mean the bite's getting better for him. It also could mean that the little adjustments, the changes, the rotation he's doing is the correct one now. It's such a nice feeling when they hit this bait because <laughs> there's no second guessing it. You're yo-yoing it and all of a sudden you just feel boing and then your line goes slack. So you just got to reel down and you got to get a good hook in them because this hydrilla is thick. So I'm using a heavier hook on my chatter bait. That way I could upscale my line to 20 pound test and a heavier rod to get them out of this thick stuff. <laughs> Seems to be good quality fish right here in this little school. I'm talking about the hook size. The new trailer. Those minor little details they're focusing in as we come into day four, that those little tiny changes they make. Mark Rose, the same thing. He was talking about at Okeechobee. He changed mm -hmm. the size of his hooks too. 
They're always picking up on cues of what these fish are doing. If they've got to use a heavier rod to, to be able to pull out of some grass, well, what adjustments do they have to make with the rest of the equipment? 573838. Everyone feel free to call him in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Get him out Congratulate of phone him. Number. <laughs> On a guide trip. Call Chris Johnson. I'll tell you what, after this trip, I'm going to have to hit up Gussie and see if we can't uh, run back one of those trips again. He goes with that heavier hook in Florida because when you're dealing with fish, it can be 10 to 13 pounds. That's different than, you know, fishing somewhere that. Uh, Big fish are just not all that common. You better have the right firepower when a 10 pounder gets on. You don't want your hook giving way or bending or anything like that. It's easy to come to Florida with tackle. You say we're live you, or you just got it going? That you're used to so. fishing with and then have one of these big fish. We just, just had a bit of a flurry, way. I think. I, Upgraded three here in the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. When I first pulled in within a minute, I saw a big swirl and uh, way out, I put this chatterbait on it and started reeling it. As soon as I yo-yoed it, it knocked two feet of slack in my line. It was a four pounder. And uh, I've caught three or four more, but the quality of fish seems to be good ones in this little school. So. I've uh, locked down on this little area and I'm going to milk it for all it's worth and I'm going to stay in this area for the rest of the day. We're right near Venetian Gardens again. This is where I ended the day yesterday. We're about 200 yards from where I caught them yesterday at three. So they're just moving around following the bait. But if we can get a five pounder here, we'll be doing something. I've missed two or three. I don't know how big they were, but. He said this time of day, he keeps an eye out for those school and hybrids or the little white bass. And uh, if he can get a cast to those, to those white bass when they're up, they only come up for 15 or 20 seconds. If he can get a cast to them and get a bait down through them, almost always there's large mouth underneath those white bass. Come on, big girl. I know you're out here. Rob, we have seen a lot of action today. This has been a fun tournament that you has. It's been full of surprises. Yeah, we got him. Let's, let's see what he's got here. Drills rolling up eight feet. And uh, these bass are on the top. There's little indents in it and stuff. I think they're just sitting in little pockets waiting for Shad to swim over. And uh, they're definitely grouped up. Um, it's awfully nice when they show themselves and make a boil because even though you only see one fish boil, there's usually a group of them there. So. I got one, probably four, three and a half, and a three here in the last. 15 minutes or so. So, still need that Lake Harris kicker though. This tournament's been full of surprises, Travis. It's a good thing I'm not a betting man. If you'd have told me when you get to Lake Harris in February, it's going to be like a summer schooling pattern, I would have said, <laughs> right. I just knew we would be I'm looking sure this at this wind is canals, not hurting the bite at all. Bed fishing. Perfect. I just knew that was going to happen. We've seen a lot of Lake Harris kickers uh, <laughs> over the last few days. Yeah. On the fall. Pump, pump the rod, let it fall. He'll help. Might be a three pounder. I just never, for a three. never thought this 
Like I said, it's a new lake. I mean, you wouldn't think that a lake like this has been in Florida for eons could become a new lake. And it just tells you what new habitat uh, does for a lake. Turns just completely turn is what makes the whole sport so much fun. Things it's are always fun changing. When you're catching some. Yep. Nice yep. Habitat's changing. Your your forage base is changing. It changes the game. It changes what these guys are. Uh, Started off with a three and four pounder. Not saying I wouldn't want to try though. Such a healthy fishery. Got to throw a huge shout out and thank you to our host, Lake County, Florida. Make sure to go check them out at lakebigbass.com. They'll be getting some visitors here pretty soon. Long and rest of the day and just hope to get in a couple more pods of these fish. Seeing how it's the only place another uh -huh. fish will whack it oh. again. Mm. He's getting those double yeah. ups. That, that, That's so ty typical of schooling fish. They're they're com they're competing with each other. Mm -hmm. One takes a swipe at it, the That's other the takes a swipe at a it. In the afternoon. It's funny. You'll see school like school like four or five fish follow your lure and they're just behind it. And it's not till one of them commits takes a shot at it that suddenly the other ones are like, you know, I want that. No, I want that. <laughs> but just getting those kind of bites is is got to be you know getting him the doubt is starting to be removed and cleansed out of the mind at this point. Any final predictions, Travis, on how this is going to end? I mean, I love what Glenn Brown is doing, and trust me, I, I, I would really love Glenn Brown after everything he's been through to win this tournament. But this is the moment, th this last hour, hour and a couple of hours away. is what I'm concerned about for Glenn. Right there. Th this bite, if it picks back up for Gussie and Johnston, it's just, Yeah, I'm not sure that I see the uh, that full breakout ability uh, in in uh, Gross's area down in South Popka. I think he can smoke, you know, 20 pounds, but really the guys with this this huge potential is Gussie, is Chris. They, they, they can come in with that 24, 25 yeah. pound limit and just own this thing. Yeah, he said. I'm just minutes from. And ugh. there he goes. I'm just minutes from Venetia Gardens. Oh, it came off. He can fish till the last minute on yes. this bite. Yes. He can fish till the last minute on this bite. If and I just think that's going to be the difference. Uh, and it feels like he's getting a little rhythm going right now, too. Maybe they are bass hitting it. That one didn't move much on the hook set. Oh. It definitely wasn't a dink. Could have been a two and a half. Could have been a four. I don't know. The last few minutes we watched Glenn, I, I, I feel like if he was going to catch one, it would have been then. Yeah. They cut me, or are they shutting it down? You're still alive, Chris. Probably end at 1230, don't they? 1227. I think if I do this the rest of the day, I gotta be able to get one good bite at least. Yeah, I don't. We're gonna stick with it. I'm sorry, I misspoke, Rob. I meant uh, Glenn Brown down in South Africa. Yeah, Brown down in. in uh, yeah, why well, he uh, has, I think he has the most consistent and steady bite. I mean, yeah. what he's doing, he is dialed in, um, and he's not gonna just hand it over to everybody. 
I think he is going to make it very hard. Uh, one of these guys is definitely going to have to earn it from him. But I just don't know that he has that 23 to 25 pound capability out there. Yeah. And I think he kind of maxes out that bottom on that 20 pound mark. Just ticking the top of the grass and the odd time I get hung up and just snapping it free. There it is. Mm -hmm. Don't think this one's very big. Good sign though, they're still here. Yeah, Good just, sign. Just, just the fact that this is firing oh, back up. That one. Have you heard him bring one in the boat and say, ooh, skinny one yet? No, it's always, ooh, fat one. But look at that thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you thumped him in his stomach, it'd pop. That might be a helper too. Seemed like a pretty good fit. <laughs> Not sure about the unofficial weights on the yeah, bag. Yeah, that's not trouble right checking right now. <laughs> this is making up for about the six hour lull I had yesterday. It is fun when you're catching them. I don't know how close he and Gussie are physically fishing right now. Both on the same program, but. Seems to be a little group right behind the corner of this boat. Another thing, Rob, uh, Gusty talked about watching uh, Chris catch a few at the end of the day yesterday. So they both come back into this little funnel. Um, and look for that same flurry. I mean, they, they, they talk about sharing the information and stuff. These guys are definitely helping each other max out both of their own potential. They're all pretty quality fish here. Thing I find amazing <clears throat> about this place that I've realized after fish the last couple of days, like you see one bust and even though there's one, there seems to always be a group of them. Yeah, the odd time you get one big one, but. Oh, something just whacked that. <laughs> if you get one fish, that's when you have to power pull down. Just keep fishing the area and there's usually a big group of them. Now, we keep talking about both these Canadians. Here's Gussie. This was just moments ago. Another sign that that schooling bite is firing up. I mean. It's a solid okay. one again. Not a giant, but <laughs> take that. Probably They're fishing two different, for a pick. two different areas. And whenever one catches one, the other guy catches one. Finally. When they, when they have lulls. They both have walls. That's just amazing to me. 
All right. I guess you just posed for a picture. I like that. Yeah, well, yeah. You got some Scott yeah. Martin level yeah. stuff right there. He's multitasking. Yeah, yeah that just, I just did this bite is back on. Maybe not as strong as it was in the morning, but it's it's that it's is a on. solid upgrade right there. I'd say so, Gussie. I'm yes, soaked sir. again. <laughs> but I'm having lots of fun. Stoked again. <laughs> Whew. Better get this net ready. Now before we leave Gussie, you got to look at his feet. He's barefoot right now. <laughs> 18 degrees yeah. back home in Canada, and he gets to be barefoot, shorts, and leading day four of the second stop of the tour here. Well, I'm a mess, right? I got everything spread out. The last, the last two hours of uh, <laughs> going from Glen Brown uh, offshore back to Glen Brown, uh, you know, it's just uh, been blow by blow. And um, I got everything just tore up here on the desk. So, uh, so many different storylines to follow right now. Literally, one yeah. guy seems to be figuring it out. We follow him, we hone in, really pick apart what he's doing. And then, boom, another guy sticks a fish and totally goes against what we're talking about. And now we have a new storyline going. And, and here's a look back at some of this action that we've seen all day today. Offshore domination has been mm -hmm. incredible. Absolutely been incredible. Decent one. And you know the guys down in Florida that, that uh, maybe haven't figured some of this stuff out yet. All the locals, great. they're going, well, thank you. There's one. Yes. Middle of nowhere. Oh, oh my that was, gosh. Oh. <laughs> that one still gets me. Got to catch it twice. Right Bear hug that sucker. You need a, a freeze pounder. frame of just how close that fish was out. And then this guy, right now, only one fish oh, still. Strikes early, the six pounder. How do you like that fish? Oh, that's bigger than that. That's a giant. That is such a monster. And then doesn't follow it up with anything. As of now, still hasn't followed it up. This man we... is very lethal. Don't count him out to the grand end of the tournament. If he pulls up in the mouth where those guys are throwing, uh, <laughs> he can stick his limit and steal the title from everybody. Bam, yeah. baby, bam. Back to Glenn Brown here, one of his better fish catches so far today. I mean, it's just been blow by blow. Four pounders. And we're leaving Glenn Brown with still also another small fish in his libel. Yeah. He's got some threes and fours, but he's also got that one that's about squeaker. one and three quarters. So there is some upgrading available for him. Mm -hmm. uh, another person, uh, Jared McMillan, currently in 10th place. And this just shows how it's anyone's game because he's all the way down in 10th right now, but. He has a one pounder, two two pounders, doesn't even have his fifth fish yet, but the one thing he does have in the live water now is a five and a half pounder. So it shows that he's able to get those fish. He has made his moves later in the day over the last few days. So, and he's in 10th place right now and I still think he could end up winning this whole thing. Tell me this, Travis, after what you've seen today, I need your mercury moment. Oh, mercury moment. Uh, you know what? I got to give it to Gussie. He's been slowly moving up. He's uh, been slide. improving Fish his catch spot. every single day. Come on, And baby. then in the morning, yes, this happens. Oh, yeah. That wakes you up. That's a chunk. Listen to this prophecy. Oh. This could be. White chatterbait. A prophet. That's how you win the tournament, a batch oh, of those things. That's that awesome. is how you win it, Gussie. And, and you know what? That was the thing. He's good been day. dialing it in. That happens first thing in the morning, and it says, Gussie, do you? You've, you've earned this. Just lay it down right now and make this final day count. And he's done that. He just keeps upgrading. He's having a great time. He's posing for pictures. Right now, I would give him, uh, I like him. I'm gonna, that's gonna be my pick right now. Okay. It may just be because, you know, we have a relationship I've gotten to hang out with, I really like them. <laughs> All these anglers, great guys on here. Um, but who would your pick be right now, Rob? I just like, I like Chris Johnson right now. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm so torn. I, I, I would love Glenn Brown to win this. Just, I've known the guy a long time and he's gone through so much in the last couple years with, with his colon cancer. He's battled back, he's back on the water. You know, I'd love to see a win there, but I mean, Chris Johnston has just, he is, he, he's firing that bite back up. He started with the lead. I do, do not think he's going to relinquish it. And how about John Hunter? I mean, Chris Jones has some work to do at weigh-in uh, today. That's all I can tell you. He's got, Chris, get ready. You, 
<laughs> You've got work to do at way in here. Well, every time John Hunter gets bumped down a few places, he comes right back. He answers back. And so this has just been the storyline of the day. Uh, if you guys are anywhere in the uh, Florida area, anywhere near the Harris Chain, uh, you've got to go check out the weigh-in. Venetian Gardens, this is a weigh-in you do not want to miss. You're going to see giant fish be weighed in by the legend Chris Jones, who's going to make it a show no matter what, and it's going to go down to the wire. I cannot wait to see what happens. Rob, this has been an absolutely fantastic event. It's been a blast, event. it really has. For you guys, this is gonna be the, the end of our live coverage, but like I said, we're gonna be going live again with Chris Jones at 4 p.m. on flwfishing.com. Be sure to check back in and see how this thing shakes out. You guys, that's all for Rob and I. Next time we're gonna see you, Lake Lanier in two weeks over Spotted in Georgia. Yes, sir, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.